Jason Denon with you all night. A&M and Sam, let's get started. St. Joseph Health first pitch coming. St. Joseph Health is your primary partner for primary care. And on the first pitch, it is bounced at the first baseman, Ted Burton, and he will flip to uh, Isaac Morton to get the first out. That was off the bat of Easton Lloyd, the leadoff hitter for the Cats. One pitch, one out. 94 mile an hour, and we'll see the fastball that might even be a tick higher than that as this game goes along. It's an exciting young freshman pitcher for the Aggies. St. Joseph Health is how, uh, proud to be the official health care provider of Texas A&M Athletics. One pitch in the St. Joseph Health first pitch, one out. And here is Walter Yannick, big time hitter at 375. The Bearcat catcher. This is who Jim Schlossnagel said in our Wells Fargo warm-up could be a high round draft pick for the Bearcats. First pitch to him was a call strike. Next pitch missed away on a breaking ball. It's one and one. So a ball and a strike to the Bearcat catcher, Walter Yannick. And Isaac Morton back to work. That's outside for a ball at 87 miles per hour, two and one. Yannick might be the best defensive catcher in the country. And so to get this kind of offensive production from him is really a key for his future. Check swing on a 2-1 pitch inside. They appeal down to first base. He did not go around, so it's two, uh, three and one. Well, that is not Doug Williams. Uh, he has gone over to third base back, so that's probably Clint Fagan there at first base. Three and one. Pumped him a fastball at 96 miles per hour, and it's a called strike, full count. It's pretty live arm, isn't it, John? Pretty live arm for a Tuesday. He's coming out very aggressive and really commanding the zone early. Let's see if he does it here on 3-2. Pitch on its way. Right back up the middle, base hit. Hot hitting Walter Yannick will single with one out in the top of the first inning. The Bearcats have a base runner. Yeah, good job by Yannick there. That's a 3-2 slider, which surprised me a little bit, especially after seeing 96 the pitch before. I thought you might have just reared back and thrown it. But a nice job there by Yannick getting that ball up the middle hard. I'll tell you what else is live on this Tuesday night, gentlemen, is this Bluebell Park crowd. For a Tuesday, there are really hardly any empty seats at all. They are full in Section 12 as well. We might approach... 7,000 for this Tuesday contest to watch these undefeated Aggies 16-0 and ranked fourth in the country. Malachi Lott, the hitter, first pitch sailed high and away on a fastball, 1-0. and Yeah, and Scott, we talked about just the success of the program thus far, but I think you're going to see this with the SEC. These crowds continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger every year throughout the season. It's pretty impressive. 1-0, swinging. Down the line in left, opposite field, and it is foul. That will land on the track, foul territory. Too far to run over and get it for Hayden's shot. 1-1 one, one to count on Malachi Lott. Well, also, this being spring break, able to sell Section 12, uh, walk up to the fans that showed up here today. So uh, taking every opportunity to get as many people in the stadium tonight as they possibly can. It's awesome. 1-1. One, one. From Isaac Morton to Malachi Lott on its way, and that's a called strike on the outer half for the fastball. He has him down in the count, one and two. Great night for baseball. Some clouds in the sky, a little bit of wind blowing out towards center field, and the scoreboard shows us 78 degrees. Weather report brought to you by the Pool Guy. Visit the Pool Guy's pool store off William D. Fitch next to the HEB at Tower Point. A one-two pitch to Malachi Lott, fouled off the opposite way. I don't think Blaine, Minnesota had very many crowds this big for Isaac Morton to pitch in front of. That's for sure. A, I wonder if he got a lot of this weather, too. I'm not yeah. sure. In July. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I like the way he's come out and just commanded the zone. And, you know, he's really aggressive with his body language. He's coming downhill straight at the Sam hitter. So I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him right out of the gate. And the one-two pitch from the stretch, Isaac Morton delivers. That's a cold strike on the inside corner with a fastball. He caved Malachi Lott looking. Yeah, and again, Scott, you can see the aggressiveness there. That's a two-strike pitch. He throws it hard in on the hands and just totally freezes Malachi. Well, and no loss in velocity, 95 from the stretch. We see 96 from the windup. This is a guy with, uh, you know, the kind of arm that used to not make it to college, and a and very happy to have him for the next three years. 
Yeah, that's a great point, too. I mean, we're seeing more and more of this type of player. Of course, a has got several of them. I've, as I'm looking out of the field at Jace and Montgomery and Grohovac, I mean, they've got these MLB-type players, and it's just good to see them in college. Jeffrey David, the hitter, first pitch to him, a ball, 1-0, and now Isaac Morton back with the next offering. That's bounced at Justin Vossis, making his second or his first ever start at second base. He bobbled the ball for a moment, but he flips to Ali Camarillo, covering the bag at second base to get the final yeah, out. College baseball, I think the reduction in the rounds when COVID hit really helped the game, and it just continues today. And, of course, you have NIL money. That's a call. For, actually, just missed the corner. It's ball one to Gavin Grohovic. Yeah, so, of course, you have NIL money in this now, too. So these guys have options compared to riding a bus around in the middle of nowhere Michael, minor league baseball. It's Michael Watson, the left-handed starter for the Bearcats. And actually, that first pitch was a called strike. So this one comes in as a ball, and it is one and one now. So first pitch, a strike. This one, a ball, one and one. Now he goes off speed, and that stayed way up. Two and one to Gavin Grohovac. Gavin hitting 322. Three homers on the year, 18 RBIs. 2 1 pitch on its way. He fouled that off back to the net with a hard cut, two and two. And John, you played on a team with Stephen Truitt leading off games. Uh, very similar to this, a guy that can leave the yard but has some athletic tools. It's not just something, Johnny, come lately to have your, your speed guys at the bottom. I mean, Street Scarborough uh, was at the bottom of your lineup, and you really had power from, you know, one through six on you know, a really good team. Outside on the pitch to Gavin Grohovac, three and two. No, that's exactly right. The game change where you have guys like this that can kind of put all the tools together. Full count pitch on its way, fouled off. They can put all the tools together, speed, size, strength. And, you know, Gavin is one of those guys. So he's a unique leadoff guy. But, again, in modern-day baseball, you see more and more of this. And you're right, Truett was a great example of that. Of course, Tyner was an old-school leadoff guy. Exactly. He was a burner. Full count pitch again to Gavin Grohovac. He fouled this off hard on the ground right at the Sam Houston dugout first base side. Well, Still three and two. I mean, five-tool guys like yourself are obviously very <laughs> rare. <laughs> I wish. I wish, Scott. I had about one tool. But, no, you know, Gavin is, is kind of a Mike Trout type of a build. You yeah. know, he's got super strong legs and just thick. But you're right, Will. Pretty, pretty good looking uh, frame. I'll tell you what. He's fighting off this at bat like a boxer up there. It's still full. He just did another foul ball right side. Yeah, and you see this a lot in baseball. When you see a lot of pitches, you see him fouling the ball off to the opposite field like Gavin's doing. Many times that leads to a ball in the gap or a hard-hit baseball. We'll see what happens here. Another full count pitch. Fouled away. Opposite field again. First base side. What happens here is pitchers get really nervous because it doesn't matter what they're throwing. They're not getting it by them. And, again, they know the talent that Gavin has. So let's see what he does in this A-B, but I would expect a, a good movement of the baseball here. Well, guess what just happened on another full count pitch? He fouled that one off. This one goes on to the east lawn. I mean, they are full on the east lawn over there. On this beautiful crowd on this fantastic Tuesday night, A&M and Sam extended at bat to lead off the bottom of one for the Aggies. Gavin Grohovac still up there. I think this is the 11th pitch of the at bat. Full count again. And he got him looking on the inside corner at 91 miles per hour. Long at bat, but Michael Watson strikes out Gavin Grohovac. Yeah, that was a, a plus pitch right there to get it under the hands after away, away, away. You think at some point in time they're going to come in there. It was right on the black, and that's how Lisa call strike three. And that was. It was the 11th pitch of the at bat. Jace Laviolette up. First pitch to him. That will... Missed the zone, 1-0, and oh, and Jace, a 321 hitter with the seven home runs and the 23 RBIs. Michael, Michael. Left on left matchup, 1-0. Oh. That's a call strike on the inside corner, 1-1 one and one to Jace Laviolette, the preseason All-American. Yeah, back to what you said, Scott, that was a great inside fastball that froze Gavin. Hammered this pitch to straightaway center field on the 1-1. One, one. And that got over the batter's eye. Didn't just clear the wall in center. It got over the batter's eye. And Trackman is showing us this at 400.
about 70 feet. Are you kidding me? Bubbles in the air early, one to nothing. The Aggies lead on the eighth home run of the year by Chase Laviolette. I was talking to Bronny before the game, and we are talking about the connectivity of Laviolette's swing. That was Bronny's words that he used last week, and you saw it right there. That's an off-speed pitch. He stays directly on it and just uses that bat speed and power to launch the ball over the center field wall. And you remember when it was so hard to hit it, you know, over the shorter straightaway center field wall. And yeah, that's just amazing hit right there. 109 miles per hour off the bat. Braden Montgomery's at the plate. The first pitch to him is a ball. Here's that next offering. That will also miss up, and it's 2-0. and oh. And you played in some lineups like this too, John, where it wasn't just the guy or the guy or the guy after that you just have, don't have a chance to come up for air. 2-0 and oh to Braden Montgomery, and that will miss upstairs, 3-0. and oh. and That's exactly right. And, you know, you go back to Gavin's at bat, 11-12 pitches. That's a great job of making the pitcher throw a lot. Jace is sitting over there timing every one of them, and he got what he wanted and just crushed it. The 3 is a called strike. Braden up there with the 397 average, seven homers, and the 30 RBIs lead the SEC, and they rank third in the country. 3-1 pitch. That will miss low, and after the Jace Lavulette home run, Braden Montgomery is a walk. You know, one thing I like as a left-handed hitter is sometimes if you're struggling, which I know Jace hadn't really been struggling, he's still got some good numbers for sure. But sometimes when I face a left-handed hitter, it was better because I didn't tr try to do too much. And you see Jace there not trying to pull the ball, just taking what the pitch pitcher's given him and just using his tools and, and going out of the park. We saw that last Friday night too when he hit the line drive over the left center field wall. That's usually a good sign. Hayden shot at the plate now and a call strike to start his count. Hayden hitting 333. A couple of home runs. 17 driven in. Hayden five doubles. Ties for the team lead. First pitch was a strike. That's upstairs. It's one and one. Hayden four for seven on Sunday and seven for 15 in the Rhode Island series with six RBIs. That was two in each game. And in the bottom of the 10th, he delivered a base hit to right field to bring the Olsen magic and win it 12 to 11 for the Aggies. Keep them undefeated at 16 to 0. That's fouled off back to the net. Had the pleasure of speaking to Hayden before the game. He's just fun to talk to. Yeah, there is not a bad conversation you can have with Hayden Shot. He's awesome. Get another left on left matchup here. We know that Florida's got a couple lefties coming at him, so this is good preparation for Hayden here. Yeah, he had five good innings against Houston last week and a loss. That's upstairs, two and two. So they're getting a quality start against him in Watson. They lost that in the in the ninth inning on a throwing error uh, by their All-American catcher candidate, uh, you know, uh, Yannick. 2-2 two -two pitch on its way to Hayden. Skies this one over the left side of the infield, and they're calling for it with the shortstop, Jace Martinez. He will make the catch as Hayden shot pops out. Yeah, and that slider or sweeper that Morton's throwing is not fooling the Aggies. Hayden just missed, missed that. I know that's just a pop-up out, but he barreled up that ball, and it's not fooling AM at all. One to nothing Aggies in the bottom of the first on the heels of the Jace Lavulette 470-foot home run over the batter's eye, and Ted Burton will step to the plate. First pitch to him, a cold strike. Teddy hitting 375. He's left the yard three times. He's driven in 14. And he's got an 0-1 count. Watson with that 0-1 pitch. That just missed the outside corner. 1-1 one one with a fastball. Got Braden Montgomery running at first base. Ted steps back in from the right side. Looks out at Watson and the 1-1. That's outside for a ball, 2-1. Here's the veteran guy. That's what the, one of the things I like about this lineup. Sophomore Lavalette who played every game last year. Junior, senior, 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 junior. And baseball, college baseball all of a sudden got old. <laughs> These guys will just tell you that to your face too. Yeah, they it's not, you know, 
You came back for your senior year was the exception, not the rule like it is now, John. No, for sure. And that, that's where the proliferation of NIL has really changed the game because you got a bunch of old rosters because guys are, are making some money at it. Ted Burton, a three and one count now. Here's that pitch, swinging, fouled that back above us. Looks like it's going to land on the roof, and it did. Full count to Ted Burton. That was the same pitch that Watson got Gavin on in the first at bat of the game. He's not scared. He's not throwing super hard, but he's not scared to bust him in, which as a left handed pitcher, sometimes that can get intimidating to come in when you know your velocity is not too high. Full count pitch to Ted Burton, high and away. Walked him. So Braden Montgomery's on second base after the walk. Ted Burton at first base now. Jackson Appel will come to the plate. You know, Scott, back to the pro ball discussion. I mean, just the athleticism in college baseball is, is awesome. I mean, you're seeing Burton out here. You're seeing Montgomery out here. You see Grohovac. You see Jace. These guys are just great athletes. They're very big people. They're strong people, and they can run. It's a lot of fun just to watch the sport as that, that athleticism increases. We wait the first pitch to Jackson Appel with two Aggies aboard. And it's on its way. That's outside for a ball. Well, Appel told Ryan Broniger in an interview that, you know, COVID, when it stopped Penn baseball, that's when he, for, for the first time, what, what do I have time to do? Work out. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go do that by myself and completely change the kind of player he was to put on the weight, uh, good weight that he did there at Penn. And then you come here and you can ramp it up to the next level strength and condition that A&M's provided. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. You know, I wish the MLB would continue to reduce the total rounds in the draft. I know they've done that permanently, which I like, but I wish it was even lower. Last pitch missed. It's 2-0, and and that will miss low, and it's 3-0 and to Jackson Appel. And Jackson was second team All-Ivy League as a catcher in 2022. Back that up by going first team All-Ivy in 2023. Here's the 3-0 pitch, and that's a called strike. Jackson is a Texan from Houston, went to Memorial High School, same high school as our friend Boomer White. His parents are Aggies, and Jackson is our Slovacic Sausage player profile tonight, Slovacic Sausage official sausage of Texas A&M athletics. Call strike there on the 3-1, full count now. No relation to Jackson Appel of Friendswood, Texas, though. No. no. The former free safety for the Aggie football team, they spell it different. And we commented on that <laughs> when he came here for Penn two years ago. Yeah. 3-2 pitch on its way. Went opposite field for a base hit. Reached out, drove it into right field. Runners were going with 3-2 and two outs. And Braden Montgomery will score. Teddy Burton moves to third base. The Aggies now lead two to nothing in the bottom of the first. Yeah, when you have a lineup as deep and as long as AM has, and you give free passes, that's what happens with two outs. Great job of hitting right there as Jackson Appel hits a line drive to right field and scores a run for the Aggies. Well, and then to have that, you know, the speed, they're not running as much this year, stolen base wise, but the ability to first and third second to home all through the lineup. You've got guys that are going to uh, be at that next base pretty easily. Ryan Targotch is the DH. He's a switch hitter, so he goes from the right side looking out at the left-handed pitching Michael Watson. First pitch to him, a call strike. And that was a tough, tough for me to see, but I, I thought that relay throw was going to be high, and I thought we might have been able to get second base on that. But I guess Jackson thought it was close enough to where he couldn't continue to run, but I thought it was clearly going to be over the second baseman's head there on the way to third base. And those little things like that matter a lot. You get yes. to second and third as opposed to first and third, and that opens some things up for you offensively. Last pitch, a called strike, 0-2 to Ryan Targotch. That will miss away, so a ball and two strikes. Ryan hitting 238. This is his seventh start. Last time he saw action was on March 2nd in Arlington, the home of the Rangers, when the Aggies beat USC. A 1-2 to Ryan Targach from Michael Watson on its way, swinging, chopped at the third baseman. Tough play. He was on the run and got it on the short hop. Jeffrey David couldn't field it. Bounced off of him, and Ted Burton will score from third base. It's 3 to nothing, Aggies. Tough play right there. Targach does run pretty well, but uh, that's that's something that Sam should look at that and say, that's a, we got to get an out on that one. 
you definitely have to give it an out there, or if anything, just keep the ball in front of you. I mean, he was going to score regardless, but that was an in-between hop. He got up on the third baseman there, and he couldn't make the play. At the moment, they're going to give Ryan a single and an RBI. Jackson appels at second, Targotch at first. I agree, that's a play that Jeffrey David probably should have made. Kind of ran himself into a short hop. First pitch to Ali Camarillo is a called strike, so it's 0-1. Ollie, the eighth hitter to the plate in the bottom of the first for the Aggies, leading it here three to nothing. The 0-1. Call strike there. No balls and two strikes. Ollie hitting 259. We were talking about the base running there. If Jackson appels on second base, that ball caroms off the third baseman's glove, kind of into short left field. You never know. You might could have got two out of that. Each 90-foot base is important. 0-2 pitch, that's low and in. Walter Yannick, the catcher, had to get pretty athletic to keep that from going to the backstop. It's 1-2 and two to Ali Camarillo. Ali went 2-5 for five with a double on Sunday, and that snapped a bit of a rough stretch for him. How about how Yannick selling that, that I didn't even catch that ball, and then look up at second base, see if maybe you get a back pick. He turns a little bit to hide the ball that was really in his glove. That's an advanced guy. Swing and a miss, a tip foul back actually into the mitt of Walter Yannick and on that. But it is a three to nothing Aggie lead going to the second inning. And Isaac Morton back out there to face Hunter Autry, the Bearcat first baseman. And he just missed the zone with a 94 mile per hour fastball to get it all started here. So I want to share a little A&M pitching with you this inning. Bouncing ball here at Justin Vasos. He will throw out Hunter Autry, one down. A&M pitching coming into tonight, a 1.62 team ERA. That's first in the nation. Last year was a 5.66 team ERA. Last year, almost five walks per game. This year, just two and a half walks per game. The base on balls were down. Also, another note on our pitching, Ryan Prager earlier today was named the perfect game National Pitcher of the Week. Here's Jake Tatum at the plate for the Bearcats, and that's a call strike to start his game. Prager tossed seven scoreless innings of one-hit baseball to go along with 13 strikeouts and the 11-0 win Friday night. 13 Ks, and he is not allowed a run, has Ryan in 23 and two-thirds innings. That's another called strike, and Tatum down in the count. 0-2. His scoreless streak marks the longest by an AM pitcher since at least 2,000 that we are aware of. And I want to throw another note in there as well. It's 0-2 to Jake Tatum, and that will miss low and away. So it was a week in which we had Ryan Prager named the perfect game pitcher of the week for college baseball as we await the 1-2 to Jake Tatum. Isaac Morton goes to the windup and delivers that. Reached out, foul ball. And in the same week, also today, we had Emily Kennedy of our softball team named the National Pitcher of the Week by D1 Softball. So an Aggie pitcher, softball and baseball, named the National Pitcher of the Week on the same day. Emily Kennedy was brilliant in two games against South Carolina with softball getting the sweep to start conference play this past weekend. One and two to Jake Tatum. Again, after that foul ball, Isaac Morton high on the delivery, two and two. And, and let me put this in perspective. Asa Lacy's four starts in 2020 before he was the highest drafted Aggie in history. Mm -hmm. Three and zero oh with a .75 ERA, 46 strikeouts and 24 innings pitched. Call strike three on the two two. He struck out Jake Tatum. And then Ryan Prager doing virtually I mean, identical. God, is he take, yeah, he almost might be taking it up a notch. Up. Exactly. I mean, there was a one to nothing loss in there that Asa Lacey got a no decision. But he had eight walks in 24 innings. And you're talking about as good a left-hander as ever towed the mound for the Aggies. So, Tim, I have my son, John. He, he, he like, it's like, this is getting pretty close to what Asa Lacey did. <laughs> it might be surpassing it. Yeah, the research department there, I like it. Lane Brewster's the hitter. That's outside for a ball. So congratulations to Ryan Prager. Congratulations to Emily Kennedy. And softball, they're 3-0 in the SEC after sweeping South Carolina. 
1 0 to Lane Brewster. As Isaac Morton goes back to work, here's that pitch that's outside for a ball. And all this month, Texas A&M Athletics joins the university community and the nation in celebrating Women's History Month, presented by T-Mobile, by highlighting the pioneers and the contributors to the Aggie experience through sport. To learn more, log on to 12thman.com slash Women's History Month. Outside for a ball, and it's 3-0 to Lane Brewster. Man, between... Andrew Monaco, our good buddy. Hello, Andrew. Hope you're listening. Hope all's well with you and the basketball team. And Scotty and you, Will, we've got an encyclopedia of Aggie baseball knowledge. We just keep it coming. And now we've got Scotty C's son involved, yeah. too. Yeah, more well, on the research department. That's a strike, three and one. I, I've told you this before. He's not named for you, but, you know. I hope you, not. <laughs> <laughs> but the way you, you made you a mistake. The, the way you sprayed that champagne uh, to celebrate going to the College World Series it still worked for, there's a lot of kids out there that are the name for John Shesh. All right, for a ball there to Brewster, and he walks. Well, I see my old coach, Mark Johnson, down here. I'm not sure. I think it was Chad Hudson that pulled that bottle out. He probably had it from the Ptarmigan from the night before or something, <laughs> but uh, he pulled that out, and I don't know if Coach Johnson was happy with that. But Ptarmigan was known for something different. It was funny at the time. <laughs> Caleb Cotton is the hitter. And the first pitch to him is upstairs with a fastball, 1-0. A&M leads 3-0 in the top of the second inning. There's two outs, and there's a Bearcat running at first base. Caleb Cotton is the DH, hitting eighth. This is just his fourth start of the season, and that's outside for a ball, 2-0. Does anybody ever mention that Chad, Chad Hudson actually batted between he almost Scarborough hit and... Uh, and Truitt, and yeah. he almost hit a home run, yeah. too, to make three in a row. He had some exit velocity. <laughs> the 2-0 from Isaac Morton to Caleb Cotton on its way, and that's called strike. You asked the question, does anybody ever talk about it? Yeah, Chad does. <laughs> <laughs> he was that close from being the hero, you know. Yeah. He had to let uh, Truitt and Scarbo do the work. But, yeah, he put a good movement on that ball, too. It just didn't get out. What a fun day. A lot of people say that's the most electric thing they've ever seen in Aggie athletics on that day. Man, the magic. It's Only because we didn't have regional. track man then for, you know, screech. Because I'm sure it would have been right next to that 470-foot shot that <laughs> Lavalette hit in the previous half uh, this, of this game. Or not. And last pitch was a ball, three and one. Here's that offering, and that just missed the zone a little bit up on a fastball, so... It's back-to-back -back walks by Isaac Morton after retiring the first two hitters to the plate in the top of two. Needs yeah, to, this uh, is, um, excuse me. Get a little mound meeting, needs a little talk, and uh, Jackson Appel will handle that, the catcher. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you there, but, you know, this is the one thing if you're an Aggie fan you don't want to see is the free passes. You've right. had two outs here, and you've had total command of the strike zone, and you just want to see Isaac Morton here, you know, do what he's doing and, and get out of it, but... That's really the only way that I think Sam's going to stay in this game is if the free passes occur. And that's what Coach Schlossnagel talked about over and over and over again last year. And that was a big emphasis, which they're doing. I mean, their, their strikeout to base on ball ratio is unbelievable this year. Well, and that's what gave uh, Rhode Island a chance to come back in the Sunday game. Mm -hmm. Infield hits, walk, hit by pitch, and then you hit a home run and, and you get completely different outcome. Exactly. Chase Martinez is the Sam hitter. The conversation on the mound is over. First pitch to him, a called strike. So Jackson Appel went out there and had a chat with Isaac Morton. It was a La Casa Tequila break and play. Take some time to enjoy the rest of this one responsibly with La Casa's smooth tequila for rugged country. The 0-1 pitch, that's a called strike. So Jackson Appel maybe with some wide words from the former Ivy Leaguer with Isaac Morton. He's pumped two strikes. Since the mound visit. Well, it helps having a, a, a senior college graduate catcher go out there and talk to a freshman. The 0 2 on its way, just missed outside for the breaking ball, 1 and 2. And another little thing we talked about in the first inning for the Aggies is the base running. And here you had Isaac Morton. Now you got the, the number nine hitter in this inning as opposed to him leading off the next. So those free passes can cost you in more ways than one. Now the 1 2, and he got him looking. And we're going to the bottom of the second. A&M leading Sam Houston three to nothing. Justin Vasas getting his first start this season will come to the plate. 
Justin has played in four games. He's one for five on the year. And the first pitch to him here from Michael Watson is away for a ball. One and all. Here's that next offering. That just missed outside as well. Two and oh. And all of us up here in the booth would invite all of you to visit Costa Vida Fresh Mexican Grill. Excuse me, Costa Vida's Fresh Mexican Grill. It's Baja style Mexican. That's outside for a ball. It's made from scratch daily, serving breakfast, tacos, lunch, and dinner. Aggie owned and operated in South College Station. And it's right here at Bluebell Park, Costa Vida. That's what Scott had pregame, 3 0. And, oh. and that's a four pitch walk, and that means the ball five champ will break out with this packed house on a Tuesday evening. And if you like key lime pie, save your pennies to buy some here at the ballpark. It's pretty good. It's Costa Vida Fresh Mexican Grill in South College Station and right here at Bluebell Park. And it gets Scott's endorsement. Gavin Grohovic at the plate with the ball five chant going. Make it ball six. That's high and away. And here's where he's no longer a leadoff hitter, John. He's uh, you know, a power hitter batting with a guy at first base. Yeah, again, it's a unique blend of talent that you have at the top of the lineup. Of course, the top three guys for AM's lineup are about as powerful as anybody in the whole country. It's exciting to see if you're an Aggie fan for sure. And yeah, this is a tricky situation if you're Sam Houston. This game can get away from you in a hurry with the meat of the order on its way, and you just issued a free pass. Bearcats will meet on the mound in another La Casa tequila break and play. They do have action in the bullpen. Well, you mentioned it with Grohovac. Man, he's just such a, a physical specimen as a young man. You know, just think about what he's going to get from a training perspective and diet perspective over the next couple of years. And, his power is going to come in major ways. Gavin has seven multi-hit games this season as a freshman. That ties for the team lead with Braden Montgomery. It's 1-0 to him. We're ready to go again. And that's a strike. Silences the Bluebell Park crowd for the moment. And it's 1-1 one one to Gavin Grohovac. You can kind of tell Gavin's looking out middle away, which is a good thing. Here's that 1-1. One, one. That's in the dirt out in front of home plate. Had to be blocked by Walter Yannick to keep Justin Bosses from going to second. And the reason I say that is because that's the second time that Michael Watson has frozen him on that inside fastball. We saw it in the first A-B with two strikes, and we saw it just a second ago as well. But again, as a hitter, if you're looking middle away and you react in, that's good. You don't want to be pull heavy all the time. You really can get yourself in trouble. So we'll see what happens on this 2-1 pitch. And it's on its way. Swinging hard hit, left center field, and you can kiss that one goodbye. Gavin Grohovic launches a homer seven feet shy of Jace Lomulet. This goes 463. 109 off the bat, just like Lovulets. Two-run homer, and it's 5 nothing a and And honestly, that's what I thought was going to happen in the first A-B. He was on the ball, on the ball, on the ball, fouling it off to that right side. He just got frozen up with that inside fastball to strike out looking. But this time, he got the pitch on the middle part of the plate, which we were just discussing, and he launched it over the center field wall. And how about learning from your previous at-bat, you know, and, and, and being ready for it there, and then... You know, be the first guy in, in the uh, 44 Farms meet of the order right there to uh, get it going in this inning. 0-1 pitch to Jace Laviolette as a call strike. Now he's down in the count 0-2, and, and that 44 Farms meet of the order is Gavin Grohovac, Jace Laviolette, and Braden Montgomery. Braden up next after Jace. Both Jace and Braden have been on base. I think that quick pitch right there, that might have been what they were talking about earlier, John. Now, Jim Schlossnagel is out to talk to home plate umpire Wes Hamilton to argue possibly that quick pitch. It's a one and two count to Jace Lavulette. That last pitch was a ball. But he and Braden Montgomery both have been on base in every Aggie game this year. So they, they with Gavin Grohovac, our 44 Farms meet of the order. 44 Farms invite you to enjoy premium all-natural Angus beef by visiting 44farms.com. 
44 Farms is the official beef of AM Athletics. Jim Schlossnagel's conversation with Wes Hamilton is over. And here is the 1 2 from Watson to Laviolette. Swinging foul ball out of play. Yeah, Watson's coming right at him here with the fastball. Of course, Jace hit that off speed pitch over the batter's eye in the first. I would be shocked if I see an off speed pitch here. If he throws it and it's up in the zone, Jace will be ready to do some damage. There it is. Hit this round. Way to section 12. Over section 12. Chase Lobulet. Two at bats, two homers. And the Aggies up the lead to 6 nothing. Will Hovac and Lobulet go back to back? That's exactly what I was talking about. Sorry about that, Will, but that's exactly what I was talking about. He was waiting on that out, uh, that off speed pitch. The fastball is not dominant enough. Jace doesn't respect it, so he can foul off the fastball, sit on the off speed, and if he gets it up, he's going to do that over and over again. And that one right there, the same 78 mile an hour pitch, he hit that one 422 because he pulled it. And now Braden Montgomery bats. Back to back homers for Hovac, a two run shot, followed by La Violette, a solo shot. First pitch to Braden Montgomery was a ball. Now a swing and a miss by Braden, and it's a 1 1 count. Braden Montgomery walked his first time up. Steps back in and taps the plate and awaits a 1 1. Here's the pitch from Watson. That's high for a ball. So Braden Montgomery with that walk back in the first inning. He's reached base in all 17 AM games this year. And then he had a streak going at Stanford last year. So if you go back to last year, he has crushed this, but that's going to go foul. That would have been another home run if it stayed fair, but it's just to the left of a pole in left field. But going back to last year at Stanford, Braden Montgomery has now reached base in 45 games in a row. And Rome Schubert, the right-hander warming up, is kind of like, well, I'm not quite ready yet, coach. <laughs> I'm not quite ready yet. He may not be ready at any point. 2-2 two -two pitch, breaking ball, missed. Not by much, but just missed. It's 3-2. and two. Yeah, Watson's trend has been to go fastball in when he gets two strikes. I think he's more confident with the fastball than he is with his off-speed pitches at this point. Full count pitch, swing and a miss. Struck him out, and there's one down in the bottom of the second. He went away from his tendency there. That was a 75 mile per hour pitch. I believe it was a changeup. Full Braden. Tip your cap to Watson on that one. That was a well pitched at bat for him. Aggies lead six to nothing in the bottom of the second. We have two home runs tonight from Jace Laviolette and also a homer from Gavin Grahovac. First pitch to Hayden Shot misses low and away with a breaking ball. 1 0. La Violette went 470 feet over the batter's eye in the first inning. And then here in the second, Grohovac and La Violette went back to back. Hayden Schott lifts this left field high in the air. Coming in to make the catch is Lane Brewster out there, and there's two down. For the Aggies, first baseman, number 27. Taking two of three from Oklahoma State. And just this past weekend, they swept at Texas State. Took all three from the Bobcats. But they have run into some trouble in the Aggies here tonight. AM leading it six to nothing, bottom of two, two outs. Ted Burton at the plate. He walked his first time up. First pitch from Rome Schubert, a called strike, and he goes from the stretch, even without a runner on base, and this pitch will miss away one and one. Ted Burton awaits the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball, that's a call strike. He's down to the count, one and two. Got to have no memory coming out of the bullpen. Not really pay attention to what uh, you saw happen to your teammate. It's all the pitches that get called. Ooh, high and tight, look out, Ted. Had to get out of the way of that one, two and two. Ted had a good weekend, six for 11 in the Rhode Island series with five RBIs, had a home run on Sunday. 2-2 Two -two pitch, swinging. He's gone opposite field, right field. That's deep, but it's just shy of the track, and it'll be Malachi Lott 
Bearcat right fielder who will make that catch. Back till there's one out there tonight of particular interest to Aggie fans for really multiple reasons. Yeah, we got Florida and Florida State. Florida State, the only other undefeated team in the country. Outside to Easton Lloyd to start the top of the third. And they are at Florida tonight where A&M will play this weekend in Gainesville. And in the top of the fifth inning, Florida State leads Florida 7-5. to five. It's 1-0 and to Easton Lloyd. It's a breaking ball. It just stayed low. It's 2-0. And so that's the one of interest. Florida State, the only other undefeated with the Aggies. And then uh, A&M's conference opponent to start SEC play this weekend at Florida. That is also low for a ball, and it's 3-0 to Easton Lloyd. One final, Ole Miss uh, one at Louisiana Monroe, 5-3. to three. Georgia leads Iowa 7-5. to five. That's in the bottom of the seventh inning. We'll get some more as this inning goes along. That's a four-pitch walk there issued by Isaac Morton. He's walked three of the last four hitters to the plate. Leadoff man aboard for the Cats in Easton Lloyd, and Walter Yannick will come up. And Jim Schlossnagel is coming out of the A&M dugout. Morton, who is still responsible for the runner there at first base here, leadoff runner here in the top of the third inning. Walter Yannick at the plate, the first man to face Zane Budmai. And Zane with a fastball, a call strike on the first pitch to Yannick. Yannick has the one hit for the Bearcats. He singled up the middle back in the first inning. AM six runs on four hits. Three of our hits have left the yard tonight. Two by Jace Lavulette and also a homer by Gavin Grohovac. So AM six runs on four hits. The Bearcats, no runs on a hit. Sam Houston has an error thus far. The 0-1 from Bud Mive to Yannick, not yet for the second straight time. He throws over to first base to check on Easton Lloyd back diving. And now we get the 0-1, swing and a miss on a breaking ball, 0-1 away, 0-2. Yeah, Bud Mive doing a good job of really holding the runner on there. He's switching up the timing in between each of his pitches. And again, that's the game within the game. Because 90 face, 90 foot base path victories determine whether you win or lose games in many cases. Well, the Aggies keep that big chart in the clubhouse. It's there when you see it. Are you taking the bases or are you giving away bases? They call it the 90 foot game. Well, the Aggies have been a plus in all 16 games this year. And how does it correlate? They have a 16 and 0 record. They won them all. Swing and a miss by Walter Yannick, and Zane Budmive strikes out the first man he sees. Budmive can't get to the 90s, but he pitched backwards right there to Yannick. Really wasn't featuring the fastball. For the Bearcats, right field, number 13, Pelican and Locks. So Scott, he was rolling through some of the SEC scores, and you said Florida State was beating Florida. Tonight, yeah, 7-5. Right? to five. Right. Tennessee, or Really good ball club as that's a called strike one to lot. On top of Eastern Kentucky, 13 to two. Kentucky trails Murray State, six to four. LSU, two to one over North Dakota State in the top of the third at the box in Baton Rouge. Another throw to first base. And Lloyd back diving safely again. Malachi Lott has an 0-1 count. Lott struck out looking back in the first inning against Isaac Mort. The 0-1. Fouled away, straight back. You're right, Scott. But my views on all the pitches that he has in his repertoire. Pitching the count backwards, mixing it up, doing a nice job thus far. O2 pitch on its way outside. Stayed away, off speed. One and two. Yeah, Big guy, 6'8", 270. I was trying to think who the biggest guy you would have played with here would have been. John Sneed, maybe. Yeah. John was probably 6'7", probably in that range with Bud Mive. One-two pitch, low and in, and a swing and a miss by Malachi Lott, and now Bud Mive has struck out the first two Bearcats that he's faced. That's a fastball down and in there. Of course, Ryan Roop wasn't a small guy either. <laughs> no, he was not, but he wasn't carrying the weight that Budmont is now. 
Bud Mive right now as an Aggie in six and two thirds innings. It's 11 strikeouts against three walks. That's in the dirt for a ball, one and oh. I think Jim Schlossnagel has to love the fact that he pounds the zone even when he, he transferred here from Tarleton. And last year at Tarleton, he struck out 46 and only walked seven. That big Nick frame could throw some strikes. The 1-0 pitch to Jeffrey David in a right-on-right -right matchup is on its way. That's outside for a ball. Let's pause 10 seconds for station ID. This is Aggie Baseball. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And Will in three, two, one. You're back. As we return, a 2-0 pitch is hit into the gap in right center, and that will land and get to the wall. They're going to get a run out of this all the way from first base. Easton Lloyd will score, and that's off the bat of Jeffrey David. He doubles opposite field off the right center field wall. A&M's lead is now 6-1. to one. And Let's go back to the last inning. We've talked about it multiple times here. Isaac Morton walked a couple guys. Martinez ended up hitting in this inning. Lloyd's lead, Lloyd leads off with the walk, and ultimately that leads to a run with a double in the gap there. He could get a good jump, go right away with two outs. Here's Hunter Autry at the plate. First pitch to him, a call strike. Right on left matchup. That's a breaking ball over for a strike as well. Vanderbilt leads Indiana eight to nothing. Bottom of the third inning. Mississippi State and South Alabama try it, tied at zero. Bottom of the third. Georgia State over South Carolina two to one in the bottom of the third. And the 0-2 pitch fouled off. Full slate of games, so we still got more to go. Southern Miss over Alabama. They're playing in Hattiesburg four to nothing in the bottom of the second. Auburn two, Troy one, bottom of the third. Uh, Arkansas leads Oral Roberts three to nothing. They're playing in the bottom of the third in uh, Fayetteville and Kansas trails Missouri three to two. Fouled off again. Uh, Kansas coming off a weekend in which they won the series against TCU, correct? Yeah, knocked them from the unbeaten ranks. Mm -hmm. They were the third of the three undefeateds uh, going into weekend play with Florida State and A&M. It's just the Ags and the Knolls. Maybe Cal Irvine might have been in there as well. So. They took a loss in the midweek last week. So. Just A&M and Florida State. The breaking ball on a check swing by Hunter Autry. They appealed down to third base. Did not go around, so it's one and two. Bud Mive trying to end the top of the third pitch on its way. That's another breaking ball. That's another check swing. Did not. And our commitment to providing great service remains as strong as ever. Markers says Gigam Aggies. And it's Texas A&M that is hot right now. 16-0 on the year. And a 6-1 lead here tonight over Sam Houston as we go to the bottom of the third. And Jackson Appel leading it off. So we've got about 7,000 here tonight. Wonder how many were right on guessing the engines of that southbound train rolling by shortly after 7 o'clock. I didn't guess. I should have guessed three. Three's always two or three. You're always safe there. 2-0 to Jackson Appel. Now that's high and away. 3-0. Jackson RBI single back in the first inning. Might get a four-pitch walk, and we will. That's outside. So as you get a train rolling by southbound behind the right field wall here in Bluebell Park, you're going to get the ball five chant. Got some traditions in full force right now. With the Aggies leading six to one in the bottom of the third. Ball five might be intimidating for lots of folks, but thank goodness we've got uh, Rome Schubert on the mound. Unfortunately, he was one of the kids in Santa Fe that got shot in that uh, tragic school. Uh, shooting. Wow. Probably ball five doesn't intimidate a guy no. that got shot in the head when he was 16, and here he is pitching college baseball. What a great story. Well, this is the spot that Ryan Targotch 
would hit in as the DH, but we have a pinch hitter up. It's Hank Barr. First pitch to him from Rome Schubert, a called strike. So Hank Bard in this DH spot, the seven spot in the lineup as a pinch hitter right now, and he fouled that away opposite field. Hank now down in the count 0-2, and, and he steps into tonight with a 278 average. Ninth game Hank will appear in five times he's started. Oh, and two to Hank Barr, pinch hitter, and now DH inside for a ball, one and two. Hank started two of the Rhode Island games, one as a designated hitter, one as a catcher. Here's the one, two. That's inside on a breaking ball, too far inside, two and two. Now it's a tough pitch to lay off there. That's the back foot slider. Getting that to the glove side, under the hands to the left. Yeah, that's, that yeah. is a tough pitch. Yeah, it looks like a fastball and just breaks hard and in late. And again, another good job by Bard there. I mean, he gets the back foot slider, again, all with two strikes. And then the fastball away, he's able to take both of them. Now he's in a position to do some damage here at 3-2. Yeah, it was 0-2, now it's 3-2. Pitch on its way. They rung him up at home plate, and they did, with the runner going, throw out Jackson Appel. It was a late call from yeah. home plate umpire Wes Hamilton, but they rung him up looking. Jackson Appel trying to steal is caught, so that's a double play. That right in the bottom part of the zone. That's tough right there because you work your way back into an advantageous count if you're a hitter, and then you put the runner in motion, kind of knowing you're going to get the fastball, and the fastball's right there, and you take it and get the strike him out, throw him out, double play. So credit Sam Houston for that. They capitalized on uh, what the Aggies gave him there. Holly Camarillo stepping up to the plate. He struck out swinging earlier. He's 0 for 1. Equipment issue uh, takes uh, Yannick over to the dugout. Yannick has not missed the nutritional program or the weight room at no. all. That well, guy's Jim stout. Jim Schlossnagel said it. Wells Fargo warm up. Yannick's going to be a high round draft pick. Yeah, he's a good looking player for sure. Carries himself well. He's got great tools. Really commands the plate too, both offensively and defensively. Solid player, no doubt. So he checks out his equipment. Now he's back behind home plate and a breaking ball to start the count on Ali Camarillo as a cold strike. Two down, bottom of the third, A&M leading Sam Houston 6-1. to one. Right on right matchup here, Schubert to Camarillo. Ollie lays down a bunt, third base side, bare hand and throw. And the throw was in the dirt, was going to be a very tough play for Jeffrey Davis. said he ran inside the baseline. Yeah, he was safe originally, but now they're saying he ran inside the baseline and caused a oh, mini a collision, so he'll be out. So this is going to be a play that can be appealed. That's why they're telling them not to leave the uh, field of play. But the Bearcats have left. They may have to call them back out. Jim Schlossnagel is out talking with home plate umpire Wes Hamilton. Holly Camarillo was safe at first base, beating out the bunt on a throw in the dirt. But they're saying he ran outside of the runner's lane and ran into the first baseman, Hunter Autry, as he tried to receive that throw. Now, Autry did reach Ollie in, out. you know, into foul territory to get that ball. Let's talk to an All-American Hall of Fame first baseman. What do you think about <laughs> well, that? Well, I think that that ball carried him into the baseline. To me, you know, the third baseman is far enough out away from home plate to where you're not getting interfered with the way you would if the catcher fielded the baseball. So to me, Ollie has a chance to get to first base. I don't see him over the line. Again, I'd love to see it on video, but I believe the baseball really carried the first baseman over there, and that's what caused yeah. the interference. So uh, one of those plays to get it right, we'll have a replay. Here's the uh, call. Sometimes that call on the field's a bit too hard to overturn. 
So they will call. Tell me it's not the true. The drills were fired up. <laughs> and the it wasn't true. Were Will up. wouldn't have done that. Uh, Maybe his brother. <laughs> My brother more frequently, but I was out there. You know, we got some folks out in left field tonight as well. Section 12 is full behind right field. It is a phenomenal crowd. Jake Tatum is the hitter to start the top of four. Zane Budmive starts him off with a strike. Here's the 0-1, swing and a miss. Strike two. I can see why Max Wiener and this coaching staff like Bud Mive. You called it when he was at Tarleton. He's not going to overpower you with anything, but, man, he's a strike thrower. And he's been effective tonight. Here's the 0-2, swinging. Hitting to center field. That may fall, and it will, as Jace Lavalette was on the run trying to get there. But it fell out in front of him on a looping base hit to center field. One man on for the Cats here in the top of the fourth, A&M leading 6-1. to one. Got that one a little bit elevated. He's been working more to the bottom part of the zone. You know, even so, it's it's the same result as a leadoff walk, but for some reason it doesn't feel as bad. When the other team beats you, you're more okay with it. It's when you give them the free pass that really frustrates the coaching staff. High for a ball, 1-0. Lane Brewster, the hitter. He walked earlier. That was against the Aggies starter, Isaac Morton. 1-0 pitch. That's a breaking ball. That's a call strike. And there's this, a, sorry, John. Excuse me, Will. Go ahead. I'm just saying this team is 16-0. They're trying to get out to what the 2015 and 1989 teams did. 1-1 to Lane Brewster. From the stretch, leg kick and delivery, swinging foul ball out of play. In 2015, the Aggies started off 24-0. In 1989, they started off 26-0. And then you get this 2024 team, 16-0, trying to get a 17th straight here tonight to begin the season. And it's a 1-2 to Lane Brewster. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. But my all four of his outs in this relief appearance has been strikeouts. But with John joining us, I had to go back and look. I wanted to see what some of your teams started off like. The 98 Big 12 champs, you guys got off to a nice start, 9-0. and There you go. And the 99 College World Series team, it wasn't a undefeated start as far as a streak to begin the season, but I did keep counting. 30 games in, you guys were 24 and six. That's not too bad either. Yeah, both those teams were really special and a lot of fun, a lot of great memories for sure. Caleb Cotton's the hitter. First pitch to him, a strike. High and away on the next pitch, it's one and one. Some of my old teammates listening tonight, Steve Leonard, Chris Scarcella, shot me notes. Good so to hear from critique them. Critique or just, hey, Oh, they're Great always job, big fella. They're always ripping on me. <laughs> Wouldn't expect anything less. I'm not sure it's critique then. It's just the way you guys talk. Swing and a miss there. <laughs> so you didn't tell me if Jonathan Carter, who played uh, with you at Pasadena Doby, and then at Sam Houston, got back to you. Never did. I haven't even texted him yet. I got distracted. Sorry oh, about that. okay. He had a day here one day. He Probably did. the best day of his uh, Sam Houston career. One, two pitch, that's in the dirt. Blocked by Jackson Appel, then it popped up and I think it softly got the hitter, Colby Cotton, uh, Caleb Cotton in the chin. If I'm not wrong, he needed the triple for the cycle. And I said the only way he could do it is if he ran through third base into your dugout and, and was tagged out because <laughs> You know, on a home run, if he never got anywhere close, because you know you're not going to call a guy out and missing third base or missing home plate to get the triple. That's exactly right. That would have been a good call for sure. 2-2 two -two pitch is low and in, full count to Caleb Cotton. Okay, well, you can tell him he was still mentioned. I'll tell him. Serving our country in the Coast Guard. <laughs> or at least he before. I'm, I mean, he might be retired now. Tell me I'm, I'm wrong on that. Runner was going on a 3-2, but the pitch is outside. That's a walk to Caleb Cotton. That'll move Jake Tatum to second base. Two on for the Cats in the top of the fourth. A&M leading tonight, 6-1. to one. No, he's still in it. Okay, so there you go. After all these years. You're not that old yet, Scott. <laughs> you're not that old. 
Back to Scarcella, he started the Texas Force Baseball Club and the 8U Texas Force is also undefeated. Yeah, Will. you guys got an Aggie kind of streak going on. What are you guys, 15 and 0? Here's a bunt out in front of home plate. Zane Budmai will field and he will throw out Jace Martinez. And, uh, and, and, uh, and the section 203 immediately, interference, interference. Of course, they're gonna go that, but that's really yeah. what the play was designed for right there. I mean, we don't have to belabor the point there. Yeah. I still I still don't think Ollie was inside the line on that. Right. But I think what Will said is exactly right. That call on the field is what is gonna- I have an issue here. Oh, more, more and more. It keeps on coming. Easton Lloyd's the hitter, and it's a breaking ball after that meeting on the mound. That's a called strike. It's, it's Taco Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesdays. And I told you about this before the game, John. The food has arrived. Only short rib tacos. And we will dig in. This is a ground ball. That's a foul ball just outside the line at first base. Past a diving Ted Burton. That was close. And it would have brought a couple runs home for the Cats. But it's a foul ball off the bat of Easton Lloyd. Yeah, this is a big part of the game here for Easton yeah. Lloyd. You know, you got a two out at bat. Of course, you got Bud Mive who's commanded the zone well. But here we are in the top of the fourth with the pivotal moment here. Well, got to turn on that inside pitch right there, just unable to keep it uh, fair. And that is a non reviewable play. So it's an 0 2 count to Easton Lloyd. Pitch on the way, swinging. That's hard hit. That is a base hit into right field and a couple of cats will come home one pitch later lloyd drives in tatum and cotton and the cats get closer it's six to three the aggies lead here in the top of the fourth just to compound the issue for the aggies you have yannick up here so pivotal part of the game credit sam houston nice job on the two out at bat there by lloyd to drive in a couple runs and make this a ball game and here comes coach schloss out He's made the call to the bullpen. We'll get a pitching change. The Cats just got a two average right now at 379. And you go right on right, Brock Peary against Walter Yannick. And we're ready with the first pitch. It's on its way, swinging right side. Almost hit the runner, but it's a base hit into right field. Lloyd going to second base, had to hop that. But a single for Walter Yannick, he's two for three, and Lloyd moves to second base. Tough pitch inside half right there from a submariner and to, you know, dip it out there to right field. That's a pretty good swing by a guy hit three, you know, 380. He's had some of those at bats. Bearcats have now out hit the Aggies 5-4. Here's Malachi Lott, breaking ball, first pitch to him, came almost all the way across him. Right around the knees, but it's inside, 1-0. and I remember John Byington told me that RBIs are up the middle the other way, and you see Yannick doing that. Like you said, Scott, it's really tough to do on a sidewinder like that. They're going to try the pickoff move at second base, wheel around. And Have you seen him do Lloyd. that before? No. I saw an uh, earlier game, uh, you know, where you watch that from the high center field camera on that inside move. It's, it's crazy looking. It is. To turn your body inside out to get the pickoff. Comebacker up the middle over the head of Brock Peary. Camarillo will field, and his only play is first base, and that's dug out of the dirt by Ted Burton. That will end the inning off the bat of Malachi Lott. Nice play by Ali Camarillo to field and throw on the... the Aggies have three home runs tonight, two of those by Jace Lavulette. And Gavin Grohovac. Grohovac and Lavulette in the second inning went back to back. Justin Vasos leads off the bottom of the fourth. First pitch from Rome Schubert. That is a fast ball that he uncorked high and tight to the backstop. Actually, we do have a new Bearcat pitcher in the game. This is Logan Hewitt. Logan Hewitt is in for Rome Schubert, third pitcher of the night for the Bearcats, and he went high into the backstop on the first offering to Justin Fossos. That's a call strike. It's one and one. It's Logan Hewitt, eighth appearance, no ERA, 13 innings, one run. It was unearned. Swing and a miss on the 1-1 one -one to Vasos. It's 1-2. and two. Uh, 156 average against Logan Hewitt. So it's been Watson, Schubert, and now Hewitt for the Bearcats on the mound. Check swing on a 1-2 pitch. Rung him up. He went around. Vasos is a strikeout victim. 
Yeah, Lo Logan Hewitt, you can see, he's kind of a wiry type guy. He's got some serious velocity coming in 94-95 and gets the sweeper going there too and gets Vasos to punch out. Tough guy to face. He's slinging it. Gavin Grohovac in the top of the order. Right on right matchup here with Hewitt in. Swinging, ground ball, base hit back up the middle. I don't want to talk about Gavin again. I mean, he's getting the ball straight up the middle again. Got a guy with a solid fastball there. That's 95 miles per hour coming in, 108 going out. And that's a really good thing if you're an Aggie fan just to see one of your best hitters and best players driving the ball up the middle a couple times tonight. Especially against that velocity when that's what starting this weekend in the SEC, you're going to yeah, get the rest of the way out on the weekends, you're going to see that velo. That's exactly right. And again, we've seen him in three at bats today. Foul it off, foul it off, foul it off in the first inning. Of course, hits the big home run later and then up the middle with the single there. Nice but, job by Gavin. And this guy's having a day. Jace Laviolette at the plate, swinging, chopped. That will go foul just off the line at first base. And you can see the technical difference there. That's an outside fastball coming at 93 with some tail on it. It's got some life moving away from Jace. Jace gets around it instead of staying back and driving that ball to the 44 farm sign. He really gets around it, hits a weak ground ball. Lucky it went foul there. And we've seen that in his two at-bats, too. He's got some off-speed pitches. And this is back what I was talking about earlier. When you have that left-on-left -left matchup, just because of the angles and the physics of it, it kind of forces you to think up the middle more. When you have a righty that's got a, you know, some nice whip on the fastball, it's tailing away from you, and you try to pull it, it doesn't normally work out well for the hitter. 0-1 oh to Jace here. That pitch will miss low and in, and it's 1-1. One one. Jace hit the ball 470 feet his first time up tonight over the batter's eye in center field. Then came back up in the second inning and hit the ball over section 12. Two times to the plate, two home runs, eight total bases, and he's trotted them all. That's low and in. So for what Jace LaViolette has done, he receives our Wells Fargo between the base paths treatment. Wells Fargo, the official bank of Texas A&M Athletics. And like we said, around the base paths, Jace LaVillette has gotten to take the slow trot around both times. Two and one, swing and a miss on a hard cut and a breaking ball under the bat, two and two. That's a really nice pitch by Hewitt. I don't know if it's a cut or a full slider or sweeper or what he's throwing there. He's definitely taking a little bit off the fastball, but it's got some life to it. And again, it's going towards that back foot of LaVillette. He's having some trouble with it here. We await a 2-2 from Hewitt. Here it is, swinging, skied into he that. Lost it. Now, he lost it. It's hard to he see. Lost it. They're not going to catch it. It's that time of night with the sun setting. And that bluish, light bluish sky. And Sam Houston let the ball drop in left field. Lane Brewster couldn't find it. Sliding into third base on all that is... Gavin Grohovac and Laviolette's going to get a double out of that off of the defensive mistake. Grohovac slid in hard to third base. He needs a moment. Jim Schlossnagel out to check on him. Grohovac now walking around back behind third base. Looks like he'll be okay. Just may have knocked the breath out of him. How about Baylor 98, was it here, where the crazy wind and the high sky and the Bears had one fall like that? And you win a, a Southwest Conference championship because that? Hey, don't date me too much, Scott. It was the Big 12 championship. Big 12 okay. championship. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. I but, did play in the SWC, by the way. Yes, I know you did. That's why it was throwing me off. But there's one right there. No, it's exactly right. This time of night, Will called it perfectly. It's tough to see. And you could tell there that the Sam Houston defender lost it right off the bat. I think that left fielder's got to be a little bit more demonstrative that I don't have the ball. Agree. I mean, I looked up and I couldn't see the baseball, and I quickly looked down at him, and yeah. I just saw him looking around. I could tell he didn't know where it was, but you're right. Normally, a guy's going to have his hands out or kind of be looking so, around. So your center fielder may or may not be able to get to it, but That's at right. least he knows that you've lost it because you're not going to fool anybody into not having two bases. Braden Montgomery ground ball opposite way on an 0-1 pitch. Base hit. Drives home Gavin Grohovac, and the Aggies up the lead to 7-3. to three. Yeah, and I'll say it again, Will, RBIs are up the middle other way. That just tells me that the batter is really staying in there. In that case, it was Brady Montgomery with his incredible RBI numbers, but he 
Doesn't even hit the ball overly hard, but he hits it to the left side of the field and it gets through that six hole and scores a run for the Aggies. Incredible RBI production early on in the season for Montgomery. It's 31 he's driven in coming into tonight. He led the SEC and he was third in the nation. Hayden shot at the plate. Hayden's hit the ball in the air twice, pop up and a fly out. Chopped this. They're going to try to get two at first base. The throw to second gets a runner, but the throw back to first is thrown away, and I think it went into the Sam Houston dugout. On all of that, Jace Lavulette scored. Hayden shot will go to second. A&M now leads eight to three. Yeah, great job by shot there putting the ball in place, Scott, but it's exactly what we talked about with Jason a little bit earlier in this inning. That ball is running away from him hard. He hooks around and hits a weak ground ball to first base, and the Aggies are lucky that a double play wasn't turned there. But nonetheless, he puts it in play, and the Aggies score another run. Well, if you're going to do that, you've got to go to the, to the right-hand side with the runner at third and less than two. So you're right, you know, it's... It, it, you're kind of caught in between. If, if, I'm, if I'm looking away and I hit it to the third baseman, are we going to get a run or not? Uh, but they did get it because uh, you're get hustling down the line for shot. First pitch to Ted Burton. It's a breaking ball low. And AM has not had very many get back innings because they haven't had to. Yeah. So to get both runs that you had in the top of this uh, frame, that's good to see the Aggies score at least two to, to, to get those two runs let back and get their lead back up to five runs. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball by Ted Burton. It's one and one. Ted tonight has walked and flown out to right. The fly out to right was somewhat deep, just shy of the track. Ball and a strike. Here's the pitch. That's another breaking ball. That stayed outside, two and one. Just a luxury to have a guy like Ted Burton. Tons of experience. One of the old guys, like you talked about earlier. A lot of D1 baseball experience. Really good hitter in the five hole here for the Aggies. Pitch on its way. That's a fastball. That stayed outside. Three and one. Teddy Burton at the plate. Hayden shot running at second base. Two more home already in this inning. AM leads the ball game. Eight to three in the bottom of the fourth. There's two down. It's a call strike, and it's a full count to Teddy Burton. Packed house on a Tuesday night. A full booth going three wide, as John Sheshuk likes to call it. Well, that, that's why we have a, a capacity crowd, because they came out to see the Us three might put us over 7,000 yeah. yeah, tonight, too. Plus Cali. Don't forget Cali. Yeah, brought your bride with you. Fouled away on a play. She hadn't put the headset on yet. I know she's itching to do that. <laughs> You said some of your former teammates are texting with uh, your critique. We want to hear Kylie's critique of the block. No, you don't, <laughs> sir. No, you don't. Well, she wouldn't say anything about you. But no, we want, no, we want the critique on you. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we want it. <laughs> Jim Schlossnagel after that taps the plate and looks out at Logan Hewitt. Full count pitch. Call strike three. Got him on the outer half with a fastball. It's a strikeout looking, but... The Aggies will get two more in the bottom of the fourth, and they take an 8-3 to three lead into the fifth. Texas A&M baseball. Uh, I mean, uh, Bender up in for Burton, so maybe something did happen there, and they don't want to risk uh, anything else. Let's hope not. Yeah. So, uh, Cal Station High School uh, product, play, uh, Bender up in at uh, first base. Jeffrey David is the leadoff hitter in the top of the fifth for Sam Houston. First pitch to him was a strike. Next one comes away on a breaking ball from Brock Peary, and it's one and one. That's outside. Two and one. You get the train horn in the distance. And another one will roll by. They'll guess the engines here. There's hands up. See one engine. There's two. This one's rolling northbound. That's a third engine. That's a fourth engine. And that'll do it. Who had four? Uh, about 10% of the crowd. That's right. Usually they don't go the, up to four on the guesses. It's a 3-1 count right now to Jeffrey David. That is upstairs for a ball from Brock Peary. And it's a leadoff walk issued. 
Third straight inning with a leadoff hitter reaching. And those last two have come around to score. Yep, it's statistically proven that you get that leadoff batter on, your chances of scoring go way up. I mean, everybody in baseball knows that fact, which is why pitching coaches just lose their mind when you get the leadoff hitter on. Eight to three, the Aggies lead in the top of the fifth. But how about Perry, who's been, you know, maybe used as a right-hand specialist for today? Before this, going to see what role he has on the weekends in SEC play, seeing some of those left-handed batters. First pitch to Hunter Autry, a strike. Comes back with the next offering. That's out of the zone. It's one and one. You know, sometimes these arm angle guys can get you some critical outs in moments when you really need that matchup out. Swing and a miss on the one one. Autry comes up empty. That's pretty nasty. It was. It's such a different look. You know, again, pretty big guy out there dropping down and coming in from the side. One two pitch away to Hunter Autry. It's two and two. Send out a congratulations to our men's golf team. They won the Louisiana Classics today. It's the third straight year they've won the title out there. Pishak Myshawn was the individual champion. So a great closing round for AM men's golf out in Louisiana. Congratulations to them for taking that title. Fouled away off the bat of Hunter Autry, two and two. Next pitch from Brock Peary. That stayed away, full count. Getting into golf talk here, Will. You know my girls play, and kind of gets me fired up when we get that going. Congrats to the Aggies. It's awesome. Are you out there swinging the sticks, too? Full count pitch, swing and a miss. It was actually a tip foul right back into Jackson Appel's mitt to strike out to Hunter Autry. Oh, yeah. I love swinging it. It's a bad baseball swing. I still love to play. Jake Tatum at the plate now. Call strike on the first pitch to him. AM is now out hit the Bearcats. Seven to five in this one. 0 oh, 1 count to Jake Tatum. He's one for two in this game. And Brock Peary comes right back with another call strike. It's 0 oh, 2. And that's what you're talking about there. You get Brock Peary dropping down. It comes yeah. across that right handed hitter and paints the outside corner. It's a tough pitch to hit for a right handed hitter. That's fouled away. And then he comes back with that Frisbee there. It looks like a fastball out of the hand. You swing, and all of a sudden, it's by you. Right, and if you're in an SEC game, and Coach Lossnickel sees two righties, a lefty, and then two righties again, then his ability to get an occasional left-hander out gives you a guy that you don't have to go, you know, uh, I got to make a change, and then change again because I go lefty specialty, and then I got two right-handers in a row again. So. It's a big for him to get some left-handers out in this game. One-two pitch from Brock Peary on its way. That's fouled off. Breaking ball. So he's doing pretty good to, to foul these off with with some some decent just I'm, I'm going to extend the at bat uh, you know swings, but he's got no chance to put that in play. Yeah, he's unless just, you're going to pop it up to your first base. Uh, you, you're right. He's spitting on those pitches and just extending that bat. Now I kind of feel. The same way I did about Grohovac early in the game, when you get these consistent foul off, foul off, foul off, like Tatum's doing, sometimes that gives the advantage to the hitter. One two pitch chopped at the first baseman, Blake Bender up, and he'll touch the bag to get the out there. Only a chance to get that out at first base. Jeffrey David moved to second on the chopper by Jake Tatum. That's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That's the only thing he could do with that pitch. If, if, and and you, if it, it's a, a safety swing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you get a little bit too much of the bat, then you, you've set yourself up to, to be an easy out there at first base. Breaking ball called strike to start the count on Lane Brewster. Brewster's 0 for 1, a strikeout and a walk. 
A&M pitching tonight, Isaac Morton, two innings, a run. It was earned. Zane Budmive, an inning and two-thirds. Two runs both earned, and now we're on to Brock Peary. Ground ball here at Caden Kent, who's in the game at second base now. He'll throw over. Jackson Appel's going to lead it off for A&M. And the first pitch to him from Hewitt is a called strike. A&M eight runs on seven hits, no errors. Sam Houston, three runs, five hits, two errors. Jackson Appel tonight has been up twice and on twice. Chopped this at the second baseman, Easton Lloyd, and he'll throw him out. So Jackson Appel, an RBI single, a walk, and that ground out this evening. Yeah, nice job there by Easton Lloyd, shifting his feet to create that short hop that went right into his glove, made a nice play at first base. One down. Hank Bard at the plate, came off the bench to assume the DH role. He struck out looking his first time up, and this is a call strike to start his count. It's 0 1. That's a call strike. It's 0 2. Well, I really like what Logan Hewitt's doing for the Bearcats. You know, as a defender out there, you just want a pitcher that gets the ball, toes the rubber, and lets it fly. That's exactly what he's doing here. He's got no fear out there. It's fun to watch. He is working quickly, and he can throw a hard fastball. That one was 95 miles per hour, but it was way outside. It's 1 and 2 to Hank Bard. Yeah, I just like the way he approaches the game. Here is that one, two, and that's way outside again. Two and two. So much of pitching is just how you command the mound. And, you know, your defenders feel that. They feel it when you're confident, and they feel it when you're not. Two, two pitch is a breaking ball inside. We've seen Bard do this a couple times now. He's fought back to a three, two count here, and the advantage is in his favor. Now, the last time he saw the ball go right down the middle on a fastball, it was a strike him out, throw him out, I believe. Full count pitch, he's gone the opposite way here and he drilled it pretty hard to left. Toward the track though, Lane Brewster will make the catch. Hit it on a line, hit it well, but Brewster got back there close to the track to make the catch. Texas two outs. That's a productive out there for Bard. Did a nice job battling that count. 101 miles per hour. All yeah, and a pitch in the bottom part of the zone to, to at least even hit it out there opposite field. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, though. You see on the track, man, it's away from Bard. He lets the ball travel, get deep, and he really turns it loose there and drives it to left center field. He's out, but still a productive at bat. Ali Camarillo is 0 for 2. Swinging at the first pitch, a tip foul, but back into the mitt of Walter Yannick. So he's down in the count 0 and 1. Coach Johnson would have called that a well-hit ball. He would have. Instead of having track man getting all those stats. He'd have had an arrow in his scorebook. Yeah, he'd have, he'd have a he tick up. mark uh, there. A vector. He would have had a vector in the scorebook saying that ball was hit well. Mark Johnson is here tonight. He coached both of these schools. We all got to say hello to him from the booth when he arrived at his seats just below us. Ground ball base hit back up the middle off the bat of Ali Camarillo. Two out single. Also want to throw this at you because I was talking about this just the other day. You know, Jim Schlossnagel, he went out and got his 900th career victory as a head coach during the Wagner series earlier this year. And we were talking about how hard it is to do to get to 1,000 because that's what Jim Schlossnagel will do now. That's the next milestone, 1,000. And we're saying you could average 40 wins a year for 20 seasons and you wouldn't be at 1,000 yet. And you think about a guy like Mark Johnson, all that he did at A&M in 21 seasons. When he left here, he was at 876. And when Coach Johnson went on to Sam for five years, it was there that he crossed the 1,000 win threshold. Hard to do. Caden Kent's the hitter. That's a call strike. Yeah, I mean, it's just a tribute to a coach who has longevity, has consistency, puts a winning program out there year after year. But when you look at it that way, you're right. Winning 40 games for 20 years and only being at you know, 800 is, is amazing to think about. That's good math right there, by the uh, way. He paused. He paused for just a nah, second. he didn't pause. Well, but the other thing is, Mark Johnson, with that, says it's because of the players. The players say it's because of the coach and the program he put together. Yeah. It's I that mean, mutual respect you all have for each other right Truth there. be told, it's both. Yes. You, know, you got to have both in order to 
to do that. Caden Kent's got a 1-1 count. Right on left matchup. That's a call strike with a 93 mile per hour fastball. It's one and two. I think that ball grazed off of Kent, either his helmet or his shoulder on the throw back to the pitcher there. Yeah. That was kind of bizarre. Camarillo did see it. He was watching the ball get going back to the pitcher and, and made a, a couple moves towards second. Their shortstop was uh, on the spot and keep him from advancing 90 feet, but he was paying attention there. Hard hit on a breaking ball, and that's down the line, and right, it's a fair ball. Caden Kent is going to bring Ollie Camarillo all the way around with a play at the plate, the throw, and they got him just in time. He doubled into the corner in right field. Ollie Camarillo was coming all the way around, but the throw and the tag were just in time, and they got Camarillo at the plate. Jim Schlossnagel out talking with home plate umpire. Wes Hamilton, he may want this reviewed for obstruction there, but yeah, if you're the catcher and you don't have the ball yet, you can't block home plate. Jim Slosnagel wants to know if Walter Yannick did or not on that case. Yannick is going to be as close to doing that as he possibly can. That's the kind of catcher he is. And uh, we'll get a replay on here. But he's going to be right up against the uh, right up against the edge of that. And I can tell I'm old school because to me that's just a great baseball play. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't understand why this could, could even be reviewable. I understand the new rules. I understand safety. But he's just doing a great job of defending home plate there. Now, again. Uh, looks like it will be reviewed as we get a La Casa tequila break and play. You know, again, I understand the rule and I understand safety protocol. But, man, that's just a nice job of blocking home plate. Now, the flip side is. In my day, you could literally just smack dab, run them over right there yeah. if they're doing that. And so you, you can't have it both ways. Jay Sirianni is also out talking with the umpiring crew. He is in his fifth year as the head coach of the Sam Houston Bearcats. Had Sam Houston in a regional last year. They went to Baton Rouge and went one and two. They were the WAC tournament champions. And now Sam Houston playing in their first year of baseball at Conference USA. They get their first conference series this weekend when they go to New Mexico State. Uh, Jay Sirianni had a word with the umpiring crew. Jim Schlossnagel already has. Jim Schlossnagel's going to get another word as this has gone under review. And as I get a look at it on the video board, I don't see anything that would overturn this. I don't think he blocked the plate. But, if you, are, but the if, if you are touching the plate at any base other than first base, it can be called obstruction, even if you're on the back half of the play. That's the rule. I think he did have his foot on the base. I just don't think he obstructed anything. Well, you don't have, I mean, even if but it's if you second go by base. the letter of the rule, yeah. maybe there is something there. Because he catches the ball. He's a lot closer than I, than I thought he was. Well, to your point, his foot's on home plate. Yeah. And like you said, by the letter of the law, that's against the rule. Now, I think a catcher should be allowed to have his foot on home plate to use as a guy. He's got to know where to put the tag after retrieving the throw. To me, that's just a good baseball play yeah. there. And really, that all changed with Buster Posey getting blown up at home plate, playing for the uh, Giants. Yeah, and they took that play out of baseball. Again, I understand the safety. Well, big guys like you running over little bitty catchers, you know, like a Craig Biggio type. I mean, what, what do you expect? <laughs> Hey, that was part of the game. I liked it. I yeah. mean, it was a lot of fun to go in hard at second base. Clean, but, you know, go hard. And that element of the game has just been taken away. But I do want to say that that was a, a very nice pickup in right field by Malachi Lott there. He threw that ball in well. That was a textbook relay. And really, the, the, throw, the throw won by quite a bit. I really thought Ollie was going to score. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. The throw got there in time. And they did apply the tag. Now we're just waiting to see if there is obstruction at home plate or not as the southbound two-engine train rolls by. And we will say that I believe Eldridge Armstrong is going to come in and pitch for the Aggies. He was coming out of the bullpen. So if this uh, is overturned uh, or, or not, uh, it's going to be a pitching change for the Aggies. Let's see here. We get the call. They have returned to the field. Safer out at home plate. He is out. The call is upheld. So AM will take an eight to three lead into the six. That closes out the TX Whiskey bottom of the fifth. On now to pitch for the Ag. Five arm. I mean, 94 93. 
uh, in the warm-up. He's got something special. He'll face Caleb Cotton to start things off, and he started him off with a strike at 94 miles per hour. Yeah, you're right, Scott. I saw him pitch the other night, too, and that's the thing that jumped off of me is just the electricity in the arm and just a nice, loose action. Excited to see him throw tonight. Swing and a miss there on another fastball right by him. It's 0-2 to Caleb Cotton. Okay, just like we were talking about with Logan Hewitt, you got Armstrong coming in here and just going right at the hitters. The team feeds off that for sure. See what he does 0-2 here. 0-2 pitch, Eldridge back to work. That's a breaking ball. That stayed up just a bit, not by much. It's 1-2. and two. Yeah, that looked like a strike to me. Pretty good pitch, though, 0-2. think he had a chance maybe to get some swing and miss action here. Caleb Cotton has walked twice, 1-2 against Eldridge Armstrong. Here's that pitch, swinging, foul ball. Hit it somewhat hard, but onto the east lawn. Packed with folks out there on the lawn tonight. Let's see what they've done to set up this next pitch here at 2-2, because, I mean, now 1-2, because it's been two breaking balls in a row. Eldridge from the stretch, even with no runner on base. Here's the 1-2. Came back at him with another fastball. That's high and away, two and two. Eldridge Armstrong, some good numbers out of the bullpen for the San Diego State Aztecs last year. 30 appearances, 3.24 the ERA. He struck out 46 in 41 innings. 2-2 two -two pitch, swing and a miss, and he struck him out. First K of the night for Armstrong, and the first man he sees in Aggie pitching has struck out nine in this one. Scott's one thing it's it's exciting for me to see when a guy like Armstrong gets a chance last week or over the weekend and does something with it and now he gets yeah. another one. It's fun to see how these guys build on outings, especially on a staff as talented as AM has. I'm excited for him to get this second look. Jace Martinez is at the plate and he starts him off with a strike. And you know that Max Weiner sees uh, after three straight innings with a leadoff hitter. That right there, you go out and you punch the first guy out while it strikes. 0-1. That's hard hit. Ringing single into left field off the bat of Jace Martinez. One out single in the top of the sixth for the Bearcats. The Aggies lead the ball game here tonight, 8-3. To and that's the second time we've seen an off-speed pitch from Armstrong up in the zone. You know, really hittable. And he's got such good life on his fastball, 93-95, to that he can live off that and then create some swing and miss action with his stuff later in the count. Easton Lloyd in the top of the Bearcat order. Right on left matchup. Breaking ball for a called strike to start him off. Lloyd tonight, one for two, and he's walked. He scored a run. Two RBI single his last time up back in the fourth inning. In the middle, all three of their runs here tonight. Swing and a miss on the 0-1. He's down to the count 0-2. So now here's your thing. Boy, are you going to put something with a wiggle out there but take it to the bottom part of the zone, or you know, are you going to go back to the fastball? Well, he can do whatever he wants here. The thing is, is Lloyd's a good player. I like what I see out of him. He's got a very compact swing. You see him resting the bat on his shoulder there, but I would try to get a swing and miss. That's ripped into right field. He pulled it. Two-strike pitch. Base hit single for Easton Lloyd, his second hit of the night. It moves Martinez to second base. Two on, one out, top of the sixth. Bearcats trying to work something up. AM leads in the run column where it matters, eight to three. And there we go, Scott. We see right there on the track, man, that ball's middle in. Hitting you know, zone right there. Perfect hitting zone yeah. to a really solid hitter. I mean, Lloyd's not going to get fooled with two strikes. Credit Lloyd. Now Yannick's up, tough spot for the Aggies. Yonix two for three. First pitch to him here is low for a ball. Yonix has his average up to 388 on the season. So right on right matchup here with Eldridge Armstrong on. Here's the 1 0. -oh. Fouled that back to the net. AM pitching tonight. Isaac Morton, two innings a run. He struck out three. Zane Budmive, an inning and two thirds, two runs both earned. He struck out four. Brock Peary, a scoreless inning and a third. He had one K. And now Eldridge Armstrong on the mound. 1 1 pitch to Walter Yannick. 
Swinging, ground ball, past the diving shortstop, and Ali Camarillo into left field. Three straight singles for the Bearcats, and they're going station to station. Everybody moved up a bag there, and the bases are loaded with one out. Got that inside. I mean, that's just a good piece of hitting right there from Yannick. That was not one that was nearly as much middle of the plate as the previous singles have been. Yeah, Lloyd and Yannick, they're good hitters. They're going to get you. And they're not going to be overwhelmed by 93 to 95. They're disciplined enough to hit the off speed. But I still like what Armstrong's doing here. He's coming right at him. He's got a chance to still get out of this inning with a relative limited damage. Maybe a Dos Equis double plays in order here. Time was called as Malachi Lott was coming to the plate. Lott is 0 for 3 in this game. And Lott must bat in the three hole for a reason. I mean, it's 183. It's three home runs and nine RBIs. So something more than the numbers to have him batting in the three hole. And a big spot right here with the bases loaded. Jackson Appel will come out from behind home plate to talk with Eldridge Armstrong. At Texas A&M, our goal is to build champions, and we need you, the 12th man, to be a part of that like never before by joining us in our official NIL partner, Texas Aggies United. Join Texas Aggies United today at TexasAggiesUnited.com and help build the best NIL program in the country. Peyton Smith will face Malachi Lott. First pitch to him high for a ball. 1-0, bases loaded with Bearcats. One out in the top of the sixth. A&M eight, Sam Houston three. Breaking ball in the next pitch. It stayed up and away, 2-0. Jim Schlossnagel said in our Wells Fargo warm-up that there are certain pitchers he does not want to use tonight because he has conference play looming on Friday night at Florida. And the trainer's coming out to look at Smith. First interview. I was going to say that the first interview. First you got interview is, is, a, is a collegiate <laughs> baseball player was by Brent Zwerneman at Holloman Field when I wasn't even playing in the game and got tossed. Oh, you've had and uh, what did Coach Johnson think Had to that? run to the airport a couple times. <laughs> Atta boy. Atta boy. I think even when I got off the bus, I had to run to the airport a couple times. The meeting on the mound is over. Peyton Smith checks out okay with the trainer. And a 2-0 fastball stayed up. It's 3-0 to Malachi Lott. Next pitch. That's a call strike, 3-1. Yeah, Jim Schlossnagel, he doesn't want this one to get dicey with the Aggies out in front 8-3, but he's got some pitchers he doesn't want to use tonight because you have Florida in conference play coming this weekend. Top it down just a little bit, getting a little more control at 93-94 instead of overthrowing. Just got a swing and a miss, and he's working quick. And now this is tagged deep to right field, and that ball is gone, and it's a grand slam, and Sam Houston is within a run. Malachi Lott deep to right, grand slam. All of a sudden, the Aggie lead is 8-7. to seven. Well, Scott, you asked the question yeah. on why Malachi Lott's in the lineup, and you just saw the answer. And that is going to tie for the team lead with Hunter Autry with his fourth home run of the year. And now he has the team lead in RBI with 13. And first breaking pitch of the night. How about that after fastball, 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 that you are going to get on that breaking pitch out of the zone. Yeah, that down, down and in pitch to a lefty. I mean, again, if you follow baseball, you know that's the sweet spot. You drop the head and get it out in front, and the ball's going to travel the way it just did for Lott. Jeffrey Davids now the hitter. First pitch to him it was a call strike. Next pitch, a ball, one and one. Here's that offering, one one, fouled out of play. And just as we said, Jim Schlossnagel doesn't want to get dicey in this one and start using some pitchers he'd rather hold possibly for Friday or Saturday against Florida. Well, it has gotten dicey. One two pitch high and in two and two. A&M had a six to nothing lead after two. Going to the bottom of the fourth, it was six to three Aggies. 
But the Aggies put up a two spot in the bottom of four, got it back out to eight to three. That will miss. It's a full count to Jeffrey David. And then here in the sixth, grand slam homer by Malachi Lott. And Sam is back within eight to seven. Full count pitch to Jeffrey David on its way. Got him looking. Oh, strike three. 94 on the fastball for a strike. A nice recovery there by Smith to come back after the lot home run. Get a punch out there and get it to two outs for the Aggies. Straight up off the bat of Hunter Autry on the first pitch. Tacos, lunch, and dinner. Aggie owned and operated in South College Station. In the broadcast booth, it is Will Johnson, it's John Cheshick, it's Scott Clendenin, our director of this broadcast tonight, it's Tony O'Neill. Gavin Grohovac leads off the bottom of the sixth. And the first pitch to him, a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. He's down in the count, 0 and 1. Gavin's had a good night, two for three, launched that two run homer in the second inning. Also a single. Here's the 0 1, ground ball, somewhat hard hit. This is at the shortstop, Jace Martinez, and he will throw out. Gavin Grohovac, one down at the bottom of the sixth. John, what kind of pep in the step do you get after you put up a grand slam and make a, 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 a five-run game, a four-run game the next time you're up? Yeah, it's a momentum changer for sure. And, you know, Sam Houston always comes over here and plays the Aggies tough. They like playing here. So they're definitely pumped right now. It's a big, big change in momentum in the game for sure. First pitch to Jace Laviolette is inside for a ball. It's 1-0. Jace. 470-foot home run, solo shot in the first inning over the batter's eye in center field. Then launched a solo home run over section 12 in the second inning as he went back-to-back -back with Gavin Grovac. That he was only four, yeah, yeah, 422. Yeah, yeah, he backed off of that. Yeah. Then he got lucky his third time up in the fourth inning. They couldn't find a fly ball to left, and it dropped for a double. This time he will ground out to second base. Just hit a roller to Easton Lloyd. Lloyd will throw him out. 4-3 there. Two down at the bottom of the six. Braden Montgomery now. Tonight Braden has walked, struck out, and driven home a run with a single. So he's one for two, he has an RBI. He's also scored a run, he's ripped that into right field, pulled it, drove it off the wall, and he will have a double with two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Look how hard that was off the bat. Yeah, it didn't miss by much, it just didn't have enough lift in it. Yeah, that ball was absolutely smoked to the right center field gap. 113 miles per hour on the exit velocity. And goes 394 feet. <laughs> so just needed just a tad more. Fun to watch him run around the bases, too. That premier athlete. Yeah, he is for sure. Hayden shots 0 for 3. He's got Braden Montgomery running at second base. The Aggies lead 8 to 7 in the bottom of the sixth. Ten hits now for AM. Breaking ball to start the count against Hayden Shot. Called strike on the inner half. Well, Andy answered back in the fourth, a get back in and got even with two. One right now would play huge. It would. I'd like to see Hayden with a line drive here. He's had a couple of pop-ups and one chopper. That's a hard hit ground ball, but it's right at Easton Lloyd. Lloyd will throw out Hayden shot four to three on the signs, print, and direct mail needs. All within one team of skilled players. Learn more about our winning culture and playbook of services at intechdubs.com. Intech says get an angle. Bearcats will lead it off with Jake Tatum. First pitch to him from Peyton Smith. High for a ball with a fastball. And inside, it's one and oh. That's hit on a line and a diving catch made by Ollie Camarillo with a Moss Fajitas Moss Hustle play. Diving catch by Camarillo. Robbery. 
off the bat of Jake Tatum. He would add a base hit, but Camarillo took it away. Yeah, well hit ball by Tatum there. You see Camarillo in perfect position prior to the pitch. He's got solid footwork there, is able to make a diving play to his right. Great play. So Lane Brewster's at the plate now. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Start the count 0 and 1 on him with a fastball. You know, I've been pretty impressed with Sam's lineup. They're, you know, pretty solid up top. He's hit that well to right. Actually, that's just going to loft to right by the time it comes down. Kind of hung up there. Came off the bat, it looked like pretty well, but it ended up just loopy, looping and lofting into right field, I'd say. And it's caught by Braden Montgomery, who didn't have to move a whole lot. Yeah, but Montgomery was also adjusting to the lights there. You saw how he got his body and got in a position where I'm going to see it and the lights aren't going to interfere with that. That's something that, you know, the, the pro scouts downstairs will see that. And, and very few other people will notice that he played the lights and the ball exactly right. First pitch to Caleb Cotton is a ball. Here's that next pitch fouled off onto the net, so it's one and one to Cotton. Yeah, and back to the lineup here. I mean, you got Cotton down at the bottom. Martinez has done well. So, you know, really they turn that back over to Lloyd and Yannick. It's a pretty, pretty good group of hitters here. Inside on a breaking ball on the 1-1, one, one, two, and, 2 and 1. Two balls, one strike to Cotton. Peyton Smith trying to work smoothly through the top of the seventh. And then we'd hit the Texas Mutual Insurance seventh inning stretch. And Pete Smith also trying to show the coaching staff something after giving up a home, a grand slam home run. Back-to-back like -back outs there in the sixth, and the first two here in this is Frank. I like what I've seen out of him. And, of course, he gives up the grand slam. Those runners are inherited and tough spot to be in there. It looks a lot different for him, though, if that's a solo shot yes. compared to a grand slam. Caleb Cotton just fouled off a pitch, so it's 2-2, and he fouled this off as well. Onto the roof. Got to get that breaking ball down. Yeah, Even that. though the breaking ball was pulled was a low pitch. Still that middle of the hitting zone. 2-2 two -two pitch again. This is chopped. Foul ball off the bag at third base. Cotton's pesky. Yeah. He really does fight the two strikes here. That's what I see out of Smith, too, though. I mean, again, he's getting the ball and just going right at him, which I like, especially after giving up that grand slam, like you mentioned, Scott. 2-2 two -two pitch high and away for a ball. Full count now with two outs in the top of the seven. Nobody aboard. A&M leading it here, 8-7, to seven, trying to get to the stretch and get, get, to, in the, uh, get the bats back in our hand for the bottom of the seventh. Here's the 3-2 on its way, fouled off. That is off of Jackson Appel, the Aggie catcher. He may need... Just a moment. Again, back to Cotton. He's really fighting here. Which, yeah. You know, as a fan, you love to see a guy that just wants to compete. And I know Jay Sirianni's happy about that with him at the bottom of the order. Doesn't look like he's played much this year, but he may be working his way into the lineup here based on what he's done tonight. Another two strike pitch. Another full count pitch. Here it is. Just missed with the breaking ball a bit low, and he walked Caleb Cotton. Cotton's third walk of the night. He's a bounce. The Austin Te Texas native is 0-0 with a 9 ERA. This will be his fifth appearance. Everything is in relief. Three innings, four hits, three runs. All three are earned. He's walked two. He struck out two. That uh, one home run, the only extra base hit that he's allowed here uh, this year. Luke Jackson on now in relief of uh, Smith here in the top of the seventh inning. It will be Luke Jackson against due up is Jace Martinez, the Bearcat shortstop. Luke will throw to first base. He will check on Caleb Cotton, who is back diving safely. Cotton has tried two stolen bases this year. He's been good on both of them. Right on right matchup. Martinez steps in from the right side. There's another throw to check on. Caleb Cotton. Jackson Appel's arm isn't 
above average, but I, I love his action to get the ball out of the glove and steal a step or two away from a base runner. And the runner is going. First pitch, throw down to second base, not in time. Close play, but not in time. Cotton steals second base. He's in scoring position, and he represents the tying run. Pitch was outside. It's 1-0. and Yeah, you're right, Scott. Appel's got a quick transfer, quick motion. Solid footwork there. That was a close play. Credit Just Cotton. A little bit of jump. tail there yeah. to the second base, uh, to the right field sign, kind of hurt him there. Is that one had been at the bag, it might have been bang, bang. 1-0 pitch will miss outside for a ball, 2-0. After Martinez, you go to the top of the order, and they have done some damage yeah. tonight. You don't want to get to Easton Lloyd with two on in this inning. 2-0 to Jace Martinez. Here's the pitch. That just missed. It's 3-0. Top of the Bearcat order. They have combined for six hits tonight. The one, two, and three guys, Lloyd, Yannick, and Lott. And Lott has a grand slam home run. 3-0 pitch. He walked him on four straight. So the situation has arisen. Two on, two out, top of the order, Easton Lloyd. And here comes Max Wiener to chat on the mound. And he's going to talk about throwing strikes. Throwing strike one here in this next at bat. It's the most important pitch so far in this ball game for the Aggies. Like the 12th man, Valero stands ready right now. We're proud to partner with Texas A&M Athletics because together we are leading tomorrow with actions today. That's how we are changing the game right now. Well, I told you how they keep the 90-foot game chart in the clubhouse. They also keep a chart of percentage of strikes thrown early in counts, 0-0 or 1-1. And he just issued a four-pitch walk. So back yeah. to what you were saying, Scott. Max Wiener telling him, look, throw a strike. Throw it early in the count. Most of the time, it'll work out OK. Even if the a guy, Easton Lloyd, he's having a great night tonight. And that's exactly where I was about to go. Lloyd knows that, too. He's sitting dead red fastball here. Remember the first pitch of the game he swung. He's going to swing at this pitch and be ready to go. And here is that first pitch after the mound meeting, and it got away to the backstop. Two runners move up, two in scoring position. Tying run on third, go-ahead run on second. And the pitch low and away. And a wild pitch, and it's 1-0. Yeah, and I guarantee you the only reason Lloyd didn't swing at that, it was just a non-competitive pitch. It was so far out of the zone that it was no chance to make a pass at it. But he's ready to hit right now. The guy's a gamer for sure. A hit could possibly give the Bearcats the lead. The 1-0 swinging, hard cut. And he sent it back to the netting, foul ball. And there you see it. That's an aggressive hack. He would have done the same thing 0-0. He got the pitch down the middle there, just slightly in off the middle, and he took a hack at it. So here we go with the 1-1. Leg kick and delivery. That was off speed, and it was barely up above the zone. Two and one. That's a good pitch there. That's a change up on a 1-1 count. You know Lloyd sitting dead red fastball. And the 2-1 from Luke Jackson. Here it is. That's a nice pitch. Caught the inside corner, two and two. There it is again. Nice job there. Got away from that fastball with a, with a hitter sitting dead red. And again, this is where Lloyd's tough. He's got such a short, compact swing. He's going to expand the zone here. Two, two pitch. That stayed up high and away at 78 miles per hour. Tried another breaker off speed. Couldn't get into the zone. Full count now. They're making noise at Bluebell Park. Trying to urge on Luke Jackson. Full count pitch on its way, swinging. Popped up over the infield, backing up at third base is Gavin Grohovac. He lost it for a moment. He had to go to his knees, but he... Next to H-E-B and proud to be Aggie owned and operated. Eight to seven, the Aggies lead. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning now that the stretch is over. And as we move along in this frame, Scott will take you back to the SEC scoreboard and certainly that game of interest going on between Florida State and Florida tonight. Starting it off is Blake Bender up. First pitch to him, a strike on one. 
Outside and low. Ball one, one and one to Blake Bender up. Who is in the game now at first base for Ted Burton. Here's the one, one. Check swing, did he go around? Yes, he did. He's down in the count one and two. Well, Florida State wins the ball game 12 to eight over Florida tonight. They stay undefeated. Here's the one, two, swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Logan Hewitt gobbling up some innings for the Bearcats here tonight. It was 12 to five after eight. Florida scored one in the bottom of the eighth, two in the bottom of the ninth, but uh, unable to get the victory there. Jackson Appel's one for two tonight. He has an RBI single and he's also walked. One-zero -oh pitch. First pitch was a ball. This is fouled out, out of play, left side. One and one. Well, what can we say about Logan Hewitt for Sam State tonight? Jeez. And this guy's come in and just thrown the ball very well. It's gone three innings full now, and he's kept him in it. That's a ball. That's two and one to Jackson Appel. It's almost like he bought him time. Stabilized things, and then Sam got that grand slam to get within a run. Two and one is outside, three and one. That's exactly right. He did just that. He really calmed the game down for Sam. And they just chipped away at it. Hewitt has now thrown three and a third for the Cats in this one. 3 1 pitch on its way. Swing and a miss. Full count. Now that's a surprising swing and miss there. I mean, that's 92 on the inner third of the plate. That's where he wants to see the ball, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what you're looking for. Full count pitch right here. Swinging, fouled out of play. And again, those little games within the game like that, 3-1. Appel sitting dead red fastball, probably looking middle in. He gets that pitch and swings right through it. It shows you the life that, that Hewitt has on that ball. He's not overpowering. I mean, he's 92 to 94. It's solid. And he's got some action on it. Swing and a miss on a full count pitch. And he started this inning with back-to-back -back strikeouts. And there it is again, 3-2. A little bit different. You have to be aware of the off-speed there. But you're, you're still looking fastball. He gets one in the zone and is able to get the swing and miss. Credit Hewitt on that. It's a good job. Hank Bard's the hitter. Two down, nobody on. AM leads eight to seven. It's called strike. Start his count. Oh, if you throw strikes, get ahead in the count. That's what the Aggie uh, brain trust and Max Wiener's looking for. Brown ball back up the middle, base hit off the bat of Hank Bard. And that's middle, middle for Hank, and he drives it straight up with an exit speed of 101 right through the middle. Great job of hitting there. Up the rhythm a little bit of Hewitt, too. He's been on a nice roll. Could be a big two out hit for the Aggies. 11th hit for AM. Aggies have out hit the Bearcats 11 to 9. Ali Camarillo coming to the plate. Jim Schlossnagel in our Wells Fargo warm up said this one would be a challenge. And the Cats have put up a fight. Aggies leading 8 to 7 here in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch to Ali Camarillo, swinging, fouled out of play. And that's middle, middle there with some off speed. I like that swing. It's super aggressive. You keep the bat on plane and stay through it. Again, I have no issue with that, though. He's somebody who likes offensive baseball. I love it when guys get up there and swing away. Same thing with the pitchers, right? It's all about that body language and the presence. You're carrying it up to the dish if you're on offense. You've got to do the same thing. 0-1. Swinging down the line, right field, opposite field. That lands fair. Camarillo a base hit, and coming around to third base is Hank Bard. The Aggies will have him at the corners with two outs. And just like that, you see it time and time and time again. You have a great at-bat by Hank Bard. He goes up the middle with two outs, then you get a little bloop, 
there from, from Ali, and all of a sudden you got some action here with Ken up to bat with two outs. Well, you're not going to get a vector on that one, but it doesn't <laughs> really matter. It's a second hit, and he uh, laced one his previous time up. Got to look that up. Is that even the correct term that I used earlier? No, that, uh, we're going to have to. That Southern Miss program, I mean, just year after year, they put together solid clubs. They can't quite get over the hump and get it to Omaha. That's because they keep getting matched up against Super Regional play against the SEC. It's true. They've got to be that top eight national seed. It's true. they got a good program in there. Meeting on the mound is over. Caden Kent at the plate. First pitch swinging. Foul ball through the coach's box at first base. Right by Michael Early. As a northbound four-engine train rolls by Bluebell. They want to light up here. They want to add to the lead. It's a one-run game in the bottom of the seventh. Almost 7,000 here on this Tuesday night. Caden Kent, an 0-1 count. You at the pitch, swinging. That's a ground ball foul past the bag at first base. I kind of always look at confidence of hitters. When I see them pulling off, pulling off, pulling off, that tells me they're not super uh, comfortable allowing that ball to travel deep in the zone. We'll see if Kent can make an adjustment here. But Because he like, did on the double down the line. I thought that was a... He did. Uh, you know, one where he did stay on the baseball. He did. He's got an 0-2 count. Hewitt from the stretch, high and tight. He had to lean out of the way of that. One and two. Yeah, but sometimes it's really hard as a hitter to let that ball travel deep on you. So, again, that's when I see guys going up the middle the other way and driving it. That tells me they're super confident in their approach. Let's we'll see what Kent can do with two strikes. Aggies at the corners, two out, one-two pitch. That's low and in. And it's two balls and two strikes to Caden Kent. He came into the game for Justin Vossus at second base. First time he hit was in the fifth inning. That was that double for Caden. 2-2 pitch coming with two down. Hewitt. The leg kick and the delivery. Swinging foul ball out of play. And on the pitch, Ali Camarillo was going. And Scott, this is where as a, as a hitter you have a great chance to really show your teammates what you can do in a clutch situation. And believe me, people notice what's going on when these at-bats come up. They see how you react and respond as Coach Loss comes out. Camarillo wasn't back the first base yet because he had been running and uh, it was getting to the point where they were going to let him pitch. Now Cameron uh, Ali gets his lead. 2-2 Two -two pitch again to Caden Kent from Hewitt. Here it is. Low and in for a ball. 3-2. and two. It's a nice take there. Again, you look at the comfort level. We talked about it earlier in the at-bat. He's kind of spinning off some balls, but all of a sudden he's changed it back to his count in his favor. A lot of noise from Bluebell Park here. Full count, two outs. Camarillo goes. Hard hit, right field. Will it land? No. Malachi Lott got over there and made the catch on the run. Will, you've talked about it a lot of times tonight, but what an awesome environment for a Tuesday night ball game. Oh, it's been terrific. And the crowd's they into it as well. They're into it. Want these Aggies to stay undefeated before heading into conference play. A&M coming into this one. 16-0. Walter Yannick, first pitch to him from Chris Cortez. The breaking ball that was up, and it's 1-0. And here's that pitch. Swing and a miss on a pitch that was low and away. 1-1. One and, one. Yeah, and Logan Hewitt pitched against A&M last year. Six and a third innings. Nine strikeouts, no walks. I think he's had some trouble with him. Walter Yannick, the 1-1 from Chris Cortez. Swinging, fly ball, center field. Laviolette back at the track. He'll watch it fly. That's gone. Walter Yannick is four for five with a home run now. Solo shot right there. Ball game is tied, 8-8. Eight to eight. Wow, have a day, Walter Yannick. And that's a pitch somewhat down and away to him, off speed. He stays on it, gets the barrel through the zone, lofts it up, the south wind does the rest. It's an exit speed of 104. Ball's hit well. I didn't think it was going to get out. I didn't think Jace thought it was going to go no, out. No, not the way he was tracking it. There's Malachi Lott, who last time up hit the grand slam. 
Yeah, and Scott, you're pointing at the track <laughs> man there. I mean, 99 miles an hour, which is some serious velocity. Yeah, that's like I'm frustrated at you hitting a breaking ball for a home run. Mm -hmm. But you don't get to take that previous one back. Nope. First pitch to Lottie, fouled off. It's 0-1. Here is that 0-1, swing and a miss, strike two. A&M led 8-3 after five innings. Then Lott hit the grand slam in the seventh, got it to 8-7. To and now Yannick has a solo home run this inning, and it's 8-8. 0-2 eight eight. pitch, Cortez to Lott, swinging. He trickled that up the third base line. There's going to be no play. Cortez tried to make oh, a he's play. Got to play, got to play. He threw it away. Got to play. Yeah, he's backed things up on the throwaway, and Lott was trying to get back to first base. And they throw him out. Yeah, so Malachi Lott jumps by. The ball gets by the first baseman. He makes a quick move to second base and then realizes he's in trouble. Great job by Caden Kent to be over there. They make a quick play to bender up and get the out at first base. Poor base running there by Lott. You have to look over your right shoulder to pick up the baseball. And what he did is when he saw it, he quickly made a move to second. And that's what got him in trouble. He was now exposed and got thrown out. Huge out for AM there. Poor base running by Lott. Big time stuff. Jeffrey David, the hitter, pitches outside for a and, ball. 1 0. And Kent and Bindruff don't have to be too excited about it. They've just got to make the solid play uh, because he's, he's quite a ways off. There's the 1 0. Swing and a miss. Yeah, and it's crazy when those things when those things happen. You know, it's a perception of a bad play on a and side, but then you get really good looks at, at what's happening behind the scenes as Kent backs up and does his job and Bender ups back on the bag for an out. 1-1 one, one to Jeffrey David. That's a 99-mile-per-hour fastball that's low at 2-1. And, and I also think Bender up got just enough of that ball that it didn't go farther down the line, that he got a little bit of leather on it and kept it from really squirting away. Good point. Two and one in the dirt. Well, that was three and one. That was almost the same play that we saw Jeffrey David have early with Ollie. I mean, it was pretty similar from a positioning standpoint on the field. And I was actually looking to see where Malachi Lott was running. He looked to me like he was in the same spot that Ollie was in earlier. Three one, swing and a miss. Full count now. Yeah, great job by Kent backing up. So we have to give that a Moss Fajitas Moss hustle play of the game. Moss Fajitas is a proud partner of AM Athletics. Full count to Jeffrey David. Cortez, the delivery, swing and a miss, and he struck him out at 98 miles per hour. You know, Will, back to your point about backing up, I had a coach tell me when I was in professional ball that uh, you can never rest on a baseball field. And you see that there with Kent. You know, you can't be upset about anything that happened when you got out at the plate with two runners on. You got to be ready to play defense. And credit Kent, he did a great job. He was in the right spot at the right time. And like you said, Bender up got some leather on the ball, and the Aggies made a great play. Hunter Autry at the plate. First pitch from Chris Cortez. And it was an excuse me swing. I, Cortez, after the home run, has been like, I'm going to bring the heat 98-99. Yeah, and he has been consistent with those two numbers here on these fastballs. And now there's the, he breaks one That's up the 88. quality break at the bottom of the zone. Well, and that's what I like to see early on in the count is you, you, you blow the fastball by people at 98-99, then all of a sudden that sweeper is just nasty. It's one and one to Autry. Here's that pitch. That's a call strike. Consistently in the high 90s, hitting 98 right there. It's one and two. One two pitch on its way. Just missed. Two and two. 12 hits tonight for the Aggies. Now 11 hits for the Bearcats. Game is tied at eight in the top of the eight. Two and two from Chris Cortez to Hunter Autry. Line drive back up the middle. Base hit. I don't understand how that exit speed is only 92 on that. <laughs> I think that's a that's not a not a good track man right there. I don't know how you can turn 92 into something less than that. Jim Schlossnagel's out arguing with home plate umpire Wes Hamilton, and he's pointing down at first base as well. Jim Schlossnagel not happy with the turn of events there.
Schlossnagel is now back in the dugout, but he continues his conversation rather adamantly with home plate umpire Wes Hamilton. Wes Hamilton has pulled out the notebook and the pen. It's a possible warning of some sort. And now he wipes off home plate, and it looks like we're ready to go again. Could Autry have said something on the way to first? I, I don't know who wanted to be mic'd up in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Jake Tatum. First pitch to him, a cold strike. 99 miles per hour. Both teams, eight runs, 12 hits. 0-1. The unleashed again. Fastball for a strike, 0-2. Chris Cortez from the stretch. We await the 0-2 to Jake Tatum. Here it is. Outside for a ball. Runners going. That's borderline a delayed steal. But there was no cover by the Aggies. Autry got to second base. He's in scoring position, and it would be the go-ahead run. It's a one and two count to Jake Tatum. Chris Cortez, the pitch on the way. Foul ball on the ground, back to the net. Bounced back to the net. Sam Houston has left nine on tonight. We need him to strand a man at second base here. One-two pitch from Chris Cortez. Here it is, breaking ball down the line and right. That's gonna go foul, and it'll even get on to the east lawn by the time it lands. Stick with a one-two count. AM trying to remain undefeated, and they have been taxed here in this last week. It's hard to win each and every time out. The Aggies trying to hang on to that undefeated record. Breaking ball high there. Had a close one with Texas Southern here last week. Had to walk off. Rhode Island in extra innings on Sunday. We're 8-8 eight eight in the eighth here tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch, low and away. Blocked as it was in the dirt. Jackson Appel blocked it. It's a full count to Jake Tatum. That's going to bounce a long way if he doesn't block that one with the backhand right there. So full count pitch with two outs coming to Tatum. Right on right matchup. Cortez deals. Chop, high chopper at second base. Kent on the run, got him. Aiden Kent made the play on the run and got him by about. Logan Hewitt for the team lead. He's got three saves, that's a team high. 11 and two thirds, 12 hits, eight runs, six are earned. He's walked two, he's struck out 16. He's given up two doubles, a triple, and a home run. And that uh, extra base hits against him. AM will start off the bottom of the eighth inning with the top of the order. Gavin Grohovac, first pitch to him, a strike from David. Right on right matchup. Here's the next pitch. That's a cold strike. Breaking ball, and he's down in the count, 0 and 2. Grohovac, two for four, two run homer in the second. Base hit single in the fourth. Fouled that off the end of the bat to stay alive, and he's still down in the count, 0 2. Sam Houston got an inning in two thirds from Watson, their starter, an inning in a third from Schubert, and then Hewitt just went four innings, eight hits, two runs to keep them right there in it. Tied at eight, bottom of the eighth, 0-2 pitch to Gavin Grohovac swinging, hard hit foul, way out of play, right side. And when he lets the bat fly, it is must see entertainment. Yeah. He's got some serious bat speed for sure. What a talent. Get that frame behind it. What a talent. Get him going. 0-2 pitch again. High and tight for a ball. Fastball at 93 miles per hour. So one and two to Gavin Grohovic. Top of the order in the bottom of the eighth. Game tied at eight. Here's the one-two. Swinging. Hit that hard. Fair ball down the line and left. 
third hit of the night for Gavin Grahova, and he's churning towards second base. He has a stand-up double to lead the bottom of the eighth. Both these teams have top of the lineups that they have trust and belief that they're going to do some damage. And uh, what you've seen from uh, Easton Lloyd and Walker Yannick for Sam, you're trying to get matched by Grahovic and then Lavalette. Well, AM's one, two, three punch is as good as anybody in college baseball, as anybody is you know, really in amateur baseball across the board. They're impressive. They put a lot of pressure on you for sure right out of the gate. Here's Chase Lavalette. Awaiting the first pitch from Chandler David. Here it is. Foul back onto the net. Same thing with Jace when he gets it moving. You don't, you're not expecting him to, to get under that pitch right there. Sight to see. Well, he just fills up the box. He's so physically yeah. imposing. The 0 1 to Jace on its way. It stayed up and out with a fastball that's one and one. And also such a good eye, you you know, it gets around with the way, uh, you know, him and Montgomery will take pitches and some borderline pitches will go their way. One, one to Jace, here it is. Breaking ball, up and in, two and one. Out of the zone there. Jace, home run, home run, double and ground out. That's his night. Two homers. The double was a bit lucky. It was a straightaway fly ball that they couldn't find in that setting sky. He has fisted this one up over the infield. And a diving catch is made behind the pitcher's mound by the shortstop, Jace Martinez. Fisted him, popped it up, but not a high pop up, just behind the pitcher's mound. And Martinez came in from shortstop and made a diving catch. There's one out. You see Grahovic take his time going back and make him run around him? That's, that's a headsy ball play right there. It was. I thought that ball was down off yeah. the bat. Martinez did a nice job, and you're exactly right. He had to run around Grahovic. Here's Braden Montgomery. First pitch. Breaking ball for a strike. Braden tonight in order. He's walked, struck out. RBI single and a double. So he's two for three with a walk. He's also scored a run. The 0-1 pitch to him. Right here, check swing. Pitch was outside. He did not go around. It's one and one. That control changes the at-bat here. Not falling behind in the count, 0-2. And, and what did he pick up watching Lavalette right in front of him? Chandler David, the 1-1, one, one, it's on its way. Swinging, fouled, out of play. It'll be one and two for Braden Montgomery. Tied at eight in the bottom of the eighth. One out. And Gavin Grohovac running at second base. He started this inning with a double. One and two to Braden Montgomery. Here's the pitch. Inside for a ball and an almost hitting in that right arm up around the bicep area. But it's two and two. David looks in at his catcher, Yannick. Looks like he told him to run through the signs again. Now he collects himself on the hill. Took a step off the mound and did not make a throw towards second base. That's his disengagement. So he can't do it again, this at bat. David again sets himself on the hill. The leg kick and the delivery. Ground ball, diving effort made. And what a play by Easton Lloyd to Rob Montgomery of a base hit. Ground ball, looked like it was headed for right field, but a diving play made by Easton Lloyd. He throws out Montgomery. Grahovac moved to third base. Yeah, what a play by Lloyd. I mean, he's just been a gamer all night. That ball's coming off the bat at 114 miles an hour. 
Lloyd moves to his left, dives, makes an awesome play, and it's pumped up afterwards. These guys are competing out of here, which is fun to watch. So now it's Hayden's shot. First pitch to him, swinging, fouled, out of play. Hayden's 0 for 4 in this ball game. Feels like Hayden's due, Will. It feels like he's due. Last time up, hard hit ground ball at second base with an exit velocity of over 100 miles per hour. Put a good swing on it last time. Here's the 0-1. That's outside and up to 1-1. Uh, 1-1's and one. One and the count. Yeah, you were right. Lloyd gave a hard fist pump and a loud yell after he made that diving play at second base a moment ago. Go ahead, run. Is at third base with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. 8-8 eight, eight tie, 1-1 one, one pitch, left field skied. Coming over and making the catch is Lane Brewster. Scott and Martinez have walked five times and got one hit, so they've been on base six times tonight. Christopher Cortez starts off Brewster with a strike here with a fastball, and it's 0-1. Eight runs, 13 hits for the Aggies. Eight runs, 12 hits for Sam. Swing and a miss on an outside pitch. It's 0-2, Christopher Cortez dialing him up. The fastball there at 98. 0-2 to Brewster. Brewster has one walk, otherwise he's 0 for 3. Here's the 0-2. That just missed low for the fastball. Full house on a Tuesday night. Trying to see if the Aggies can remain perfect heading into conference play on Friday night in Gainesville. One, two pitch, swing and a miss. He got him with a breaking ball. One down in the top of the ninth. Where he, he spent a little bit of the beginning of his outing throwing backwards. Now it's establish the fastball and work off of that with a breaking pitch. Yeah, that's ultimately what Yannick got. He got that off speed and stayed on it and drove it to right center. Caleb Cotton, he's walked three times tonight. First pitch to him outside for a ball, 1-0. So Cotton, only time he's been an out was in the sixth inning when he struck out swinging. And then the three walks around it, 1-0 pitch. That just missed a low. And it's 2-0. Oh. Yeah, Cotton has just shown awesome discipline all night long. Really, it almost looks like he doesn't want to swing. Yeah. The 2-0, oh, here it is. That's a call strike. Might be content to take the walk. <laughs> Here's the 2-1 from Christopher Cortez. It's on its way, swing and a miss. Down in the zone, under the bat, 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, I'd come at him right, right at him again with a fastball here. I think he can get him. With, he gets him on the inner half of the plate. He might even get a freeze up here. Christopher Cortez, the 2-2. Two -two. Leg kick and delivery, chopped towards shortstop. Holly Camarillo on the run, threw it in the dirt, but a nice pick. At first base by Blake Benderup. Two outs. You know, I see Coach Schloss get up on second base. I saw him do it before the game today. He gets behind the net on second base, and he hits fungos over to the first baseman. And he's creating that overspin and those short hops and those difficult in-between hops that the first baseman might get during the game. We're going to have a replay challenge here. Well, it certainly looked in time to me. Uh, I think we all agree he's out. Yes. But... Was there a bobble? Was there a bobble? That's the question, baby. Nah, uh, no first baseman. I don't know any first baseman that bobble. I think that was intentional. I think the, he used the long, it the, the long, The long bounce instead of having the short bounce. The review is over, and the out call is upheld. Yeah, that's right, Scott. I think he intentionally did that. I think it hit right there on the edge of that turf, and it allowed Bender up to make a play. So just as we told you, two down, top of the ninth, nobody aboard. And the game tied at eight. Chase Martinez will come up to face Christopher Cortez. Martinez, one for three with a walk.
First pitch to him will miss with a fastball low, 1-0. A&M in the bottom of the ninth. They'll start it with Blake Bender up, who's hitting in the five spot right now, then Jackson Appel, then Hank Bard. That's who's due up for the Aggies in the bottom of the ninth. That's a call strike, one and one. Fastball. Right on right matchup, Cortez and Martinez. That's a breaking ball, and that just missed the corner. The Bluebell Park crowd did not like it. It's two and one. Cortez, the 2-1, swinging, chop. Having to go up and get it is Grahovac, and the throw across got him. Grahovac on the chop, ground ball, had to go up to get it. And uh, this will be the 13th game he's played in. Three of them are starts, a 278 average. Game is tied at eight. First pitch at the bottom of the ninth. That will miss outside from Chandler David. It's 1-0. and Another special freshman right here, Caden Sorrell. Next pitch. That will miss low. It's 2 0. Drew that walk that tied the game in the ninth inning on, on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Helped the Aggies get it to extras where they would win it. 2 0 pitch. Way outside for a ball. 3 0. Now the crowd trying to summon a four pitch walk. Start up the ball five champ. 3-0, that did miss. Caden Sorrell walks on four pitches as a pinch hitter. Leadoff man aboard at the bottom of the ninth. Jackson Appel will come up and the ball 5 Chan has started. Sorrell with plus speed over there and then holding the runner, you get a big gap between the second baseman and the first baseman. Here's Jackson Appel, first pitch. That's a call strike on the inside corner. Jackson Appel tonight, one for three with an RBI single. And he's also walked the 0-1 to him. Sorrell gets his lead. That's low and oh. in, and Sorrell's going to move up the bag. I actually hit him. hit him on the foot. I thought it was in the dirt on an inside pitch and got away. But it hit Jackson Appel on the foot. He's a hit batter. And that moves Sorrell to second base. The winning run at second base. But you got a butt here, don't you, Scotty? Uh, they use it as a weapon. They, they might just as soon have hard hit. I mean, that's just kind of like the, the, the heartbeat of uh, your head coach is yep. not to give yourself up. Yep. They, they didn't have like a true that. sacrifice hit till May of last year. This last weekend they had one where it was kind of like I'm bumping for a hit with a guy at first base. It seems like in this situation it makes a ton of sense. I agree with you though. I mean, I, I love playing aggressive. I just think when you get to this point in the ball game, it's a high percentage play. Now the problem is if you don't execute it, then everybody's yeah. questioning you. Why are you getting outside of your identity? He's going to talk it over with his club here. As well, he also wanted in. to make sure it wasn't his timeout because they're having a meeting on the mound. Doesn't want to use one of his offensive timeouts. So he checks with the umpire first. Schloss Nagel brings everybody together. Yeah, the visual here is the Bearcats meeting on the mound and a host of Aggies meeting from our vantage point just to the left of home plate, sort of up the third base line. Now, you've been in this position before. Give a guy up, intentional walk to load the bases. So, do you want Bard hitting or do you want Kent hitting? That's one of the things that, that coaches go through sure. as, their, as their mind. Sure. Where am I going to get my best chance sure. to have a ball drop, driven to the gap and get, get guys home? Well, and I don't know Bard's skill when it comes to bunny. Yeah, either. exactly. The coaching staff clearly knows that. And if he's a guy that doesn't do that well, then you're not going to do that here. And like you said, it's not typically their identity. Has not shown bunt yet, and he will not. Swing and a miss at the first pitch for Hank Bard. It's 0-1. One. One, hey. one thing about the butt play, too, is it applies pressure to the defense. Yes. Hank is one for three since entering the game and coming to the plate for the first time in the third inning. Here's the 
check swing. That's a call strike. He didn't go around, but the pitch was in the zone with a fastball. He's down in the count 0 and 2. Two pretty good pitches by Davis. Overhand breaking ball to get the ball in the dirt with the first swing and then get the hand right there. 0-2 pitch, here it is. High for a ball. One and two. Caden Sorrell at second base. He is the run that would win the game. Jackson Appel at first base. There's nobody out. Eight to eight in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out with a breaking ball low. Howard strikes out, one down. Foul tip, and Walker Yannick holds on. Sorrell's got plenty of room out there. I'm sure Coach Kane's telling him that, but he can get off that bag. It's amazing how far he can get off of that secondary lead and still be in good shape. You just have to win that race to third base if there's a ball hit on the ground. Ali Camarillo at the plate. Right on right matchup, looking out at Chandler David. First pitch, swinging, foul ball out of play, right side. Ollie tonight, strikeout, ground out, and then has singled his last two times up. He is two for four all told. Got an 0-1 count looking out at Chandler David. The leg kick and the delivery. Outside for a ball, one and one. Had a long week with some hard hit balls that didn't go for hits. And from playing up in Arlington and getting there as a leading hitter to some struggles. He's been much better the last few days. 1-1 one, one pitch right here. Swinging. Luke. Shallow left field. And will land. Coming around for Nova. Hold him up right there. Had to see if it would drop. So they will hold Sorrell at third base as that fell in between the shortstop Martinez and the left fielder Brewster. Hung up there, had to see if it would land. It finally did, and everybody moves up a bag. Sorrell could win the game. He is at third base now. Bases Anything harder than that right there, a ball over your head, that you're trying to get a read on the, the, the defender and where the ball is if it's going to get caught? Yeah, that's the right play there. There's nothing you can do. I mean, he did a great job going halfway until he saw it down. I thought they still might try to send him, but I think it was the right move all the way around. Caden Kent at the plate, bases loaded, one out, game tied at eight, bottom of the ninth. First pitch, breaking ball, stayed high, ball one. Remember Kent's last at bat, he battled back in a pressure situation, hit a line drive out to right field. It was caught, but he still had a great play on it, or excuse me, a great movement of the baseball on it, so we'll see if he can do it again. And his first at bat, he doubled, came off the bench tonight. That's outside, it's 2-0. Bases loaded with Aggies. Tie game in the bottom of the ninth, eight to eight. One out, two and all count to Caden Kent. Right on left matchup. David, the 2-0. Hard swing, fouled it off straight back, two and one. Caden, one thing he's thinking, gets up to the outfield here. Yeah, I'm surprised to see how deep the outfield's playing here. Yeah. I mean, if it's, a, if it's a long fly ball, who cares if they catch it or not? The game's over on a sacrifice, right? So Sorrell can score easily with his speed. 2-1 on its way. That spiked it in the dirt. Oh, yeah. And I mean, Yannick blocked it. And if he doesn't block that pitch, that's going to the backstop, and the Aggies win. And yeah. that's a tough pitch to block. What's crazy is he doesn't shift his, his legs and feet over. He just he backhands, backhands it and picks it off the yeah. dirt. Great play by Yannick. Three and one crowd on their feet. Here's the pitch. High for a ball. He walked him. And the Aggies will get Olsen Magic for the second straight game. And they'll stay undefeated. 17-0. And the conference play to Gainesville this weekend. A real walk-off. <laughs> a true.